X in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A spell that attracts all who spit facts on line all the time. Ones who drag my name every single day. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? They keep saying you don't have what it takes to carve out your own name underneath the shadows of gods. And I keep waiting for the day you just never really comes. The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. The spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time. The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A voice that compels all to rebel from all the shackle finds. Why do they just stand there again? From when they fought from the battles I have overcome, we feel it, feel the cold and the seething tone that they make while I stand up, man among gods. And I keep thinking with my mill shooting ropes in my cold that faces towards the sun. They hate, but I'm sitting comfy with their mom. The answer in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. The spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time. The answer in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A voice that compels all to rebel from all that shackled mind. The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. The spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time. The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A voice that compels all to rebel from or a shadow mind. Until I make your mom, it's gonna be able to take another hit from my name. You'll see now, watch me not now, watch me now. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I apologize for my hair being so messy. I'm having a legitimate bad hair day. I showered and got my hair nice and wet and conditioned, and I, I brushed it, and it just puffed right back up. I tried bu uh, brushing it dry, and it puffed right back up. I just cannot get my hair under control today, so this is just how it's going to look. I think it looks hot. Well, I appreciate that. I'm not a big fan, but at the very least, it's up and to the side, and it's not curling down into my eyes, because I've been having this problem. This is maybe the longest I've ever had my hair before, and it's gotten to the point where the hair is kind of poking into my eyes a little bit. But yeah, it's good to see all of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Slashy, good to see you. Glowworm, welcome. Good to see you. Sayonara, what's up? Claravoya, welcome. Perry Icefire, good to see ya. Summerstar, what's up? Decayed Slav, welcome back. Trans Daughter of Water, good to see you here as always. War Penguin, how are you? What is this? Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, that could actually be an interesting segment. No, totally. Slashy and Warpenguin, thank you for that recommendation. I do appreciate it. I think we'll make that a segment today. 
Thank you. We can start off with that. The Putin station. Or the Putin box. Yo, guy. Hello, comrades. Would you like to come over to my house and play Putin box? My mom said that if I am very good, then I can get a new Putin box 360 for my birthday. <laughs> I can't do a very good Russian accent. Decayed Slab, how was that? Was that accurate? Great, thank you. I'm going to be honest, the amount of variability in, in what is a Russian accent is so broad that that probably was spot on to some regional accent somewhere in Russia. Or some just generally, like, uh, whatever we call that part of the world. I actually... I'm blanking for me right now. Is the term, is the term literally Slavic? But I thought Russians hate Slavs. Don't they? Because, like, I know for a fact Stalin specifically um, withheld and procured grain and other food during the Holodomor from uh, Slavs and from what would be today Ukraine, uh, like, specifically, like, keeping distribution of food rations and specifically procuring food um, as they did because there was no fucking food they had to like take it from people and then ration it out but not to not to ukraine what, what would be ukrainians though what was it called ukraine back then or was it just like the ukraine region of russia because it was just part of the like of the ussr so i don't know i don't know what they were i my history there is not perfect there are some gaps there are some gaps in my knowledge. Just channel the lady from Destroy All Humans 2? Yeah, but that that's different. That's like Hollywood Russian accent. Keeping it real, Zan? Hell yeah, them sweatpants. By the way, hello over to hello to people over on YouTube chat. If you're wondering why your messages aren't appearing on the side of the screen here. That's because this chat here is my website chat. I have my own website called xanderhall.com forward slash live. You can come here and make an account. Likely, your name that you've always wanted on what on YouTube or whatever it may be, it won't be taken here, so you can just grab it and have that name. Um, yeah, come to the website. Be part of the real chat that I read far more consistently. Ah, I see, Decayed Slav. Yeah, I can imagine people on the left might get a little shitty about that. One time, I felt so bad for this. I felt so bad for this. Oh, I was playing Tarkov once, and I encountered a guy, and he was friendly to me. And he said, uh, he said he was Russian. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, Slava Ukraini, and I shot him in the head in Tarkov. <laughs> and I killed him, and I felt bad a second later afterwards. I was like, you know, I never asked him what, what his position was on the war. Damn. That was just kind of a hate crime. So yeah, I committed a hate crime in Tarkov, guys. I'm sorry. Chick clipped? Clips me saying I committed a hate crime. Just that part, not the in Tarkov part. We have to cancel you now, bro. I'm sorry. Listen, it happens. It happens. It's all good, Zan. See, Decayed Slab forgives me. So uh, the Russian people have, have given me their forgiveness. It's all good. Orthur's Dork, thank you for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that. Hell yeah, thank you so much for the five dollar dues. Said I can't believe I let my subscribe lapse. Oh, it's okay. You don't you don't have to worry about that. It's not a it's not a shame. Shame on you. No 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 no. It's no shame. 
But anyway, spring break started, so I should be able to catch streams a lot more often. Well, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being here as well, Earthers Dork. I love having people here. I love seeing you guys in chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. On top of that, I want to say thank you to Lucas for buying one I Was Radicalized by Minecraft t-shirt from my merch store. Said, much love from a dude just living in Australia, smiley face. Thank you, Lucas. I hope you're watching the stream right now and you're able to hear uh, me thanking you, or maybe you watch the VOD after the fact. But uh, thank you for buying the shirt. For those who don't know, I do have merch. I have my own merch store, uh, and one of the shirts that I sell on the merch store, mind you, I don't really make like any profit off of this stuff. You're paying for the shipping and uh, development cost for the shirts because they make one shirt per or one piece of merch per order. So you're paying for the creation and shipping of the merch. I make one dollar in profit. So uh, yeah, with that said, uh, consider getting yourself a shirt. It is down below in my uh, description. You can order my uh, my merch. Yeah, they're made to order. Thank you, Glowworm. By Streamlabs, not by me. I, I'm obviously not, like, hunched over a table somewhere making shirts every time someone orders one and then sending it. Though that would be fucking cool, wouldn't it? I would dread success. Miss Marmalade, thank you for the, t t the tier one sub for God knows how many months. Thank you over on YouTube. That's actually a membership, but I call them subs over there because we're keeping the uh, branding consistent. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. I appreciate that over on YouTube. Based Miss Marmalade, very kind of you. Yeah, I'd just be up all night crafting shirts. That's what the clones are for? Yeah, I do need to get, like, my cloning program going, you know? I I've been kind of slacking in that department. I do need to get the cloning program going. Been meaning to do that. Been meaning to do that. Yeah, or just start a sweatshop, you know? Just go over to, like, a third world country and just, like, pay $2 a day for a bunch of children to just produce all my shirts for, like, uh, pennies on the dollar. That I sell them for? Man, this is a good business idea. Why aren't other people doing this already? I would be the first person ever to do this. Famously so. No one's ever done that. Sarcasm on point. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you could tell. Werewolf Jester, I'm glad you could tell, because some people in my chat cannot tell when I'm being sarcastic. I'm not joking, though. Like, that, sometimes I wonder, okay, this person's got to be ironic. They're joking around. They're just kind of yanking my chain. That's fine. But then I sometimes see something in my chat that seems so sincere, yet so dumb. I have to fight all my instincts not to respond to it, or, or to respond to it, um, in order to not respond to it, if that makes sense. I have to fight. Anyway, honestly, yeah, I think we'll do uh, this recommended segment for our first one. Mm. As much as I want to do, like, a uh, a lot of just, like, build-up for today's stream, um, I honestly am not, like, locked in any stun locks. I see no reason not to start segments now. Might be able to, like, finish stream a little earlier than usual, you know? Maybe play a little more Witcher 3. I will say this will be my one stun lock before we get into, so into segments. I, um, I love The Witcher. The story of it, the universe, uh, I love The Witcher 3, haven't played the other two games. Um, not a big fan of Gwent, though. However, I love The Witcher and most things about it. Despite that, due to a variety of reasons, I've never been able to even get, like, more than a quarter of the way into The Witcher 3. Um, a big part of this was when I had the time and the resources to play it, I didn't have the best PC. And my PC was so garbage, in fact, that I had to play it on the lowest settings. And even then, when I went into big cities, I found my frame rate just tanking. And I was like, I'm not going to, like, ruin the experience of this game by playing it like this. And then eventually, when I lived with my uncle for a year, he had it on his PlayStation 4 Pro. And I played a good amount of it on the PS4 Pro. I got pretty 
far in the game as compared to how far I'd gotten before. Um, that is to say, I'll be as vague as possible in describing where I'd gotten to. It involved bringing closure to a grieving would-be father. Uh, well, I guess he was a father. Um, and it involved, like, uh, a choice to either kill a monster or potentially help it, right? L very, very early on, relatively in the game storyline. But that was the furthest I'd ever gotten. And so I decided recently, you know what? I've got a much better PC now. It's not perfect, but, you know, they did a next-gen graphics update, and my PC isn't perfect, but it can run The Witcher 3 on max settings at 1080p at, like, over 60 FPS, so, you know, we should be good, as long as I'm not recording or streaming, in which case it'll take a shit, because, you know, OBS takes a lot of resources on its own. But, uh, I have started playing through it a few days ago, and I've already surpassed the point where I'd made it before. Um, I am now... Currently, I am just past the point involving the Witches of Crookback Bog. It's as much as I'll say. And I'm excited to see further into the story, because this is, like, completely uncharted waters for me. I have spoilers for, the like, the rest of the game, obviously. But besides that, I'm going in blind from this point on. And the story's really good. The graphics are really good with this next-gen update they've done. And it's so it's such a good game. It's such a good game. I'm having a lot of fun with it, so I'm excited to play it tonight, after stream. All that said, though, let me, uh, boop, 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 update the dono goal really fast. By the way, if you're watching right now and you like my content and you want to support me, please, please, please consider dropping a like on the stream and obviously any other content you see from me. Uh, thumbs up really do go a long way. It should be a habit of yours. Just drop a thumbs up if you want to support me because even though it's free and takes just half a second, it has a larger impact than you would ever think it does by forcing YouTube effectively to push my content out to more people due to the high impression rate. So, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe drop a like. It really helps. And of course, if you want to go the extra mile and you want to and you've got the money for it, consider, you know, maybe subscribing, donating, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. Well, you can see what... What do you think, Phoenix? I'm curious which one you think is the progress bar. The algorithm never lies. I mean, the algorithm has gotten to the point where it is fully understood down to a science. So, yeah, like, dropping likes, the higher the ratio of likes are to views, the better the video will perform in general. Once the like ratio to view ratio goes down, like it's getting a lot more views than it's getting likes or comments, then YouTube will start to slow down its recommendation to people, even if it's getting a lot of views. So what truly matters for a video's growth on YouTube is how much the people who are watching it are engaging with it. That'll get it in front of more people's recommendeds, which gets more viewers, which gives more opportunity for an even higher amount of total likes because what really matters is total likes on YouTube's end total likes and, and comments and engagement views matter sure they do that that's important like clicking on a video when it pops up and you recommended that helps me a lot but regardless when you do watch a video if you like it it really does help what if a video has more likes than views impossible to achieve unfortunately um, but if it did, it would probably break the algorithm and become, like, number one on trending in a day. If that was possible and someone pulled it off, that, that would happen, I would bet. Because YouTube gauges a video's success by not- by two metrics. How much the people sub to a channel, clicked the video immediately upon seeing it recommended to them in their sub feed or their recommended feed. And two, how many of those people who clicked and watched engaged in some way. That's either liking and or commenting. Dislikes count too, though dislikes are not like a thing you want to have on your videos because they, I imagine they have some way of reflecting poorly, though they do count as engagement.
Is there a browser extension that auto likes videos from channels you're subscribed to? That's a really good idea. I wouldn't be surprised if that already exists. But it almost sounds like botting, so I'd be worried about that. But at the same time, I think that's that's fine. Like that make like you're watching the video anyway. Um, so yeah, may maybe that exists. Look that up and see if it exists. There used to be an algorithm exploit where if you watched a video in slow motion, it had 10 times more engagement and got promoted. Yes, watch time also counts, but they've kind of fixed that bug with the slowing down of a video for, so it has more watch time. But you can still, like, break that system if your viewers just decide to re-watch a video. You know? That's going to add a lot more to the watch time. Or having longer videos that you're, are so consistently entertaining, your fans plan to watch all of it. Just came on to stream, will you be taking viewer call-ins today? If not, I would like to know then, or know when. I am not doing uh, call-ins today, no, today today and tomorrow will be just normal streams. However, we will be doing another call-in stream on Friday, since yesterday's call-in, or the day before yesterday's call-in stream got fucked up. Found out what the problem was, by the way. Thankfully, not a hardware problem, I don't think. My PC just need to be restarted. My whole everything crashed whenever I tried to, like, switch out from, like, my game to OBS so that I could go to full screen. It crashed everything. And so I had to stop stream, and I didn't feel like starting a new one because we were already so late in the stream anyway. And uh, I tried playing The Witcher after that off stream, and it was rendered unplayable just like uh, Vintage Story was, despite not streaming, having OBS open, or anything. And I was like, holy fuck, do I have a broken RAM stick? What is going on? So I did, like, the go-to first solution, and I restarted my PC, and the problem was immediately solved. So hopefully in the future, I will be able to stream uh, Vintage Story while doing call-ins. Because, as far as I can tell, the problem is now gone, and it was just one of those weird, like, PC was on too long type things, you know what I mean? I'm sorry to hear that, Soda Cider Studios. All right, here, really quickly. I'm gonna go grab a water. I'll be back in just a second. It'll only take me like 10 seconds. See? You could have counted that. Ten seconds. Exactly, I bet. I bet that was exactly ten seconds on the dot. I do that, like... I just like videos that I enjoy from creators reflexively, Circuit Dog, because I've made it a habit, so I'm not going to get the add-on, but for people who want to get the add-on that likes any video you've watched more than 10 seconds of automatically, um, Circuit Dog just dropped it in the chat. I'll drop it in YouTube chat too, so I guess if you guys want to be a little- if you guys want to be able to be lazy but still support me with like an automatic like for my videos if you watch long enough, um, because this add-on, which apparently is allowed, I don't think it's, like, against the rules, then, um, here you go. I know it says Chrome Web Store, but it, it's just their, like, Chrome thing. Is there a Firefox version? I don't use Chrome, Lamel. Many of you guys won't use Chrome. If you use, like, Opera or any, like, Chrome-like browser, it'll work too, by the way. Um, you can probably just Google, like, automatic like videos add-on YouTube. And it'll come up, like, what you're looking for. Oh my god, did you see the new feature? Did you guys see the new feature that uh, Opera GX added? Hold on, I gotta show this to you guys. Oh, that's not... Not that... Okay. 
Here, what what what's a good thing to use it on? Really quick. Hmm. 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 Oh, I know what to do. Chat. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have to admit, Opera GX was cooking with this new feature they added. so fucking stupid it's so fucking stupid but you better believe i'm gonna make it i'm gonna take great advantage of that feature i'm gonna take great advantage of that feature you better believe at the worst moments possible i'm gonna press oh it's paused what the fuck oh it bugged out what oh it's because the video is paused I'm just gonna play the woo bit. Just that. At like the worst time ever. You know, we're gonna be reacting to like someone telling their abuse story. I'm gonna hit it and I'm gonna be like, oh, oops, accident, accident. Sorry, guys. That was an accident. <laughs> uh. Uh, you just know a streamer who uses Opera GX is going to hit that on accident at, like, the worst time. They're going to be, like, responding to some horrible allegations, and they're just going to hit the button at the, like, the co key combo at the worst time and just hear, Woo! I think there's other ones, too. I just know about the moist macro, but I know there's other ones, too, I think. YouTube's moderators, when there's right-wing propaganda peddling and great replacement theory... Pers Guys, recently, um, we found out that Ben Shapiro had a direct phone line to Susan Wojcicki, the previous CEO of YouTube, and Ben Shapiro called Susan when Steven Crowder got demonetized for, like, the minstrel show bit, where he's, like, in the straw hat and, like, drowning the doll... That's supposed to be like a white woman. The super fucking racist thing. Uh, he got demonetized after that. Like the least harsh penalty they could have done to him. Besides just a single strike I guess. Or a warning. Um, and uh, the reason he got remonetized was Ben Shapiro has personal contact with Susan. And called her and got it sorted out. Which means these big right wing figures who are constant habitual TOS breakers. We now confirmed not only know YouTube, like, looks the other way when they break the rules, but have a direct line with them, and they can just call, hey, one of us got banned. Yep, nope, we'll fix that right now. And they'll only drop them when they've stopped making them enough money and stopped being... Do you know, could PewDiePie have even done that? Do you know even, like, big YouTubers like Jacksepticeye, Mark, or PewDiePie who have ever said that they have a direct line to Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube, they can just call up? If their friend gets a strike because they've always said they don't have that kind of special like treatment this implies that like susan and probably the current uh youtube ceo had like a personal relationship of some kind with these right-wing pundits like a personal pipeline to make sure they weren't shut down zan is there a source for this i looked it up and i just now but i unfortunately can't find anything yeah let me bring it up it's in my most recent video on ben shapiro or on crowder like ben shapiro just casually brings this up <laughs> oh i muted it oh you guys couldn't hear the uh the audio of it oh that makes it so much worse 
Here, okay, one sec. I think this is the bit where I, where we we get to that. Wow, I'm perfectly lo overlaid over myself. There we go. Show. I have you, Gretel. It really isn't. It shouldn't surprise you that the CEO of YouTube signed a congratulations letter. Oh, we're getting close. Here it is. Isn't that great? Former oh, friend Stephen Crowder and the right. event I can remember. Fire find and just proceed that has broken out between. Despicable betrayal. This is a bit old, but okay, we'll here we'll it is. Well, folks, I'm sure many of you have seen the controversy that has broken out between, I would say, our former friend Stephen Crowder and those of us here at the Daily Wire. Either this, this has to stop, or I'm going to have to stop. And it makes me sick to my stomach. I know that my business partner, Jeremy Boring, has made him sick to his stomach as well because we had always considered Stephen a friend. I was Stephen's first lawyer. I helped negotiate his contract with Fox News going all the way back. It's got to be at least over a decade. And, um, and Stephen and I had always been very friendly. I know Jeremy was even friendlier with Stephen and counseled him in very rough times. Uh, I had personally attempted to intervene when Stephen was demonetized in June 2019 on YouTube. I actually sounded off so loudly that the people at YouTube reached out to me and Susan Washkicki, got, the head of YouTube, got on the phone with me and I reamed her out over demonetizing. Isn't that great? He, the, the CEO of YouTube got on the phone with him and he, quote, reamed her out over the demonetization of Stephen Crowder. Hey guys, isn't that fucking awesome that like YouTube is this in bed with channels that are like career TOS breakers? Like, isn't it cool that Ben Shapiro got on the fucking phone with the then CEO of YouTube to work out Steven Crowder, the, the fucking constant TOS breaker, the guy who does like minstrel shows on his show? It really isn't, it shouldn't surprise you that the CEO of YouTube signed a congratulations letter with the printed silver play button. Oh, good. YouTube's just not going to load. They're, they're protect. This is a. Ch and not only that, but a signed, uh, uh, like letter from the CEO of YouTube. The bio is not a real man, but a biological woman living as a man. Slur drink. Good. Let's Wait, see what I, way, did I bring up the thing that what, got him demonetized? This, was, this is Steven Crowder. You can guess what he's doing. He's like drowning like a, a blonde white doll to symbolize like killing the white people. He does like a whole bit where he's like murdering white women by drowning them. It is like because he's supposed to. It, it's yeah. Careful, Zan. Don't get false striked for something Crowder did. That is true. Just showing this might get me a false strike for hate speech because I'm a small lefty channel. Um, but apparently, after uh, Crowder was demonetized for that, Ben Shapiro got on the horn with the CEO of YouTube and had her fix, quote unquote, the demonetization personally. So yeah, yeah. No, like it. I already, like, I, I've confirmed this. This is not like a a rumor or like a conspiracy. Uh, ben Shapiro, at least, claims that he reamed out the CEO of YouTube and she buckled and remonetized Crowder after that um, minstrel show bit. It's always been about playing up to the media that you care about enforcing this like anti-hate speech, anti-misinfo TOS. But the fact is, hate speech it is the best way to create a click farm on YouTube. It is what YouTube thrives off of monetarily these days. It's how they get the most engagement or from conspiracy theory channels, right wing hate channels and grift channels that are constantly breaking the TOS's rules against hate speech. If YouTube genuinely took action against them in the same way that like if Twitch genuinely took action against like all sexualizing content on their platform and they did, it's going to lead to a substantial amount of female streamers no longer being being able to do the content they did on the platform and it's going to like look kind of bad for twitch in that same way youtube would have to ban almost every conservative youtuber which would not look good for them in the realm of like looking as though they're not censoring dissent but the fact is conservatives just can't help but like advocate for the quote-unquote decimation of transness or the uh um destruction of blm or whatever or the promotion of a white society
Heavy Gretel, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the $5. It, it helps a lot. It means a lot. Sent to heart. Thank you. Um, guys, by the way, we are getting closer to doing quail content. Obviously, I'm not going to be starting the quail until after my trip to Texas. It's going to be happening in May. But I am so fucking excited to do quail content, dude. My yard is just like, it's starting to get a little warmer. It's still pretty chilly outside. Like, I have to use hand warmers in my, uh, like, pockets when I walk to the vape store to get weed. Um, cause I, my, my fingers will get like white and I'll have to like run them over the hot faucet in order to like warm them back up by the time I get home. Uh, it gets really, it's still pretty fucking cold here in Seattle, but once it gets a little warmer, I'm going to order the, uh, incubator. I need one that rotates the eggs, uh, humidifies the eggs and, uh, uh, like obviously incubates them. Right. And um, once I've got that, I just need to buy a brooding box, which these things are not expensive. These things are not like super, like awfully expensive. Like I'll just buy these on the internet and get them shipped here in a couple days. Um, and then after the brooding box, I'm going to buy all these things at once. So I just have them ready. I need to have um, their feed. I need high protein and high calcium feed. I'm going to need a proper coop. And I think I'm going to go with the uh, stubby short coop option instead of the super tall one. Because either the coop has to be six feet tall or a bit over six inches tall. Um, that is the only way to humanely keep quail. Because if it's like anywhere outside of that range, you're either scrunching them too much. Or uh, you give them too much space and they're able to jump. And they always jump so high they break their necks and whatever's above them and die like instantly if they're lucky. And then, um, other than that, you can just make the coop so tall that if they get spooked and jump straight up in the air, they won't hit the ceiling. So I'm going to go with, like, a, a really short coop that they won't even think about jumping in, because they don't really mind, they don't like having space. They don't care about that. They have been bred to not care or want to have wide open space. It kind of freaks them out, to be honest. They love being, like, cooped up, literally. Coop, you know, that's where the word comes from. And, uh, they just love churning out eggs. And that's all they're going to be used for, by the way. They're not going to be killed. Like, I'm not going to be killing the birds for meat. They're just going to be egg layers. I will sometime within the next, like, month or so, I need to find someone to take any roosters I hatch. The male quail, I'm not going to keep any males because I don't want them to be fertilizing any eggs. Or, God forbid, if I have two or more roosters, they'll fight. And they'll fight to the death, like, in bad ways. Like, they'll claw each other's eyes out. And so I, I might, like, wake up one morning, come out to feed my quail, and I see that one rooster clawed another rooster's eye out, and now it's eyeballs, like, hanging by a thread. Like, like horrific. Nature is horrific. And the most you... the Everything you can do to possibly mitigate nature being horrific, you should do when you're trying to keep animals. You have to think of every way in which nature could do, like, the most disgusting possible imagining thing um, and try to stop that from going down. So, no males, only hens, which are very chill among the species of quail I'll be getting, and they're just going to lay eggs all day. I'm going to get eight, which is the maximum you can get in the city limits of Seattle, and uh, I'm just, I'm just going to be a quail guy. I'm going to raise a lot of quail, going to have a lot of eggs, I'm going to run out of room to keep the eggs and i'm gonna have a whole problem there i need to make a compost bin so i can just start tossing uh buckets and buckets of excess eggs that i could never have eaten into the compost bin i don't know you know what i could do i wonder if there's like a shelter or something that i could donate all the excess fresh eggs to you know like, let's say I get, like, a, a bowl of eggs this big, and now every day the quail are just laying eight eggs that I cannot eat, and I'm just, like, building up this massive, massive, un like, I'm never going to catch up and eat backlog of quail eggs. I wonder if I could bring them to, like, like, clean them up real good, and then bring them to, like, a shelter, like a, like a, uh, what do they call them, warming facilities or something? Like, it's free food, free eggs. Like, here you go, donated. They're, they're fresh. I could bring them in a cooler full of ice. Would that be accepted, chat? Does anybody do volunteering or anything in a place like that and know if there would be any, like, weird rules where they'd say, sorry, but we can't, like, accept food that was grown by 
you in your garden or comes from your animals we can only accept like like fda um uh whatever food like F fda approved food from stores like that could be a thing that i don't know about so i don't want to like waste my time if that's not going to be possible but if it is possible then that's a good way to get rid of my excess eggs to like donate them to a homeless shelter basically so they're being used in like omelets free food I know at the very least there was that guy that made the uh, the massive amounts of pasta for giving to people at home. Michelle. Here, this is actually wholesome-ass content. We'll watch this really quick before our first segment. We will uh, we'll take a moment. Also, Larry Banks 78 thank you so much for the additional $5. Very kind of you. I really appreciate that. Said, really, unless said right-wing YouTube has feel off only then will youtube's will ban them or demonetize them because you're right about how deep youtube is within the right no it's not the right doesn't have an ideological support or sorry youtube doesn't have an ideological support for either side left or right their side is money they want to make money and the fact is playing both sides is the best way to make money you guys have seen the boys right like, I know, uh, soy, 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 you can say that as much as as you want about what I'm saying here. But it is unironically quite accurate at depicting the way the corporate world attempts to play both sides of the culture war. On one hand, these companies recognize that the hate around a show that has some, like, very clearly, like, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Committee-designed, like, shoehorned-in representation for the sake of pandering and we know that's a thing come on I'm, you know what i'm talking about here like th that does happen um like disney having their 100th first gay character ever but they kept they keep not being their first ever gay character because they have to edit the movie for airing in china or russia that kind of thing um yeah so it's like i i feel like that kind of stuff uh is a really good example of how the biggest corporations want to play both sides of the culture war they benefit from the hate for what is considered woke they benefit from the support acting as like a countercultural push for the thing that's being called woke they get to farm a lot of goodwill off of presenting themselves as very progressive with like lgbt flags on the, like you know google doing their lgbt flags during pride month and yet all the while the ceo of youtube which is one of google's biggest uh like brands has a direct line to a guy who is famous for epically owning transgenders it's like really not to mention you know what really sucks that one youtuber who exposed this in nerd city is now like a crazy conspiracy theorist transphobe now like on board with like the gamergate 2 stuff but back before he became cringe nerd city exposed that youtube was very heavily um suppressing any content that involved lgbt stuff weirdly enough content that like said sjw or used derisive terms for lgbt people would not get suppressed by the algorithm but content that used words that were typically used by pro lgbt people or lgbt people themselves like coming out was a was a term that was suppressed on youtube um gay lgbt queer um trans like all these terms were instant suppression in the algorithm on youtube and nerd city was able to prove it and youtube had to scramble to make a response all the while they're doing the shit that they're doing right they're, they're demonetizing lefty channels constantly all the while remonetizing channels that are doing like minstrel shows uh it's just yeah they're going where the money is do I, I oh okay i had a hair in my i you ever get like a hair caught like on the edge of your lip and you just keep feeling it whenever you talk and you're just like i i can't i can't stand it i can't stand it i gotta deal with it maybe one of my like uh sensory uh is just like hair on my lips i really can't stand hair touching my lips like even even if it's like a hot girl kissing me and like some of her hair brushes against my lips i have to go like and try not to visibly, like, uh, cringe at it, you know? It's not that, like... I, I don't know. It, it, it's part of, like... God forbid any hair actually gets into your mouth or into your throat. It's not a pleasant feeling, okay? Okay. 
No, Balthazar, I'm a soundboard. Hmm. By the way, Balth, I'm finally playing all the way through The Witcher 3, and last night, I finally hit the point that is the the furthest away from home I've ever been. The furthest into the game I've ever been. And I have, like, spoilers about the end of the game, but very few spoilers about the middle part of the game. So if you want to watch me play some uh, Witcher 3 and see what is now my blind reaction to the rest of the game, hit me up, because I know you're one of my mutual Witcher fans. I'm also getting Ethan to play through it, and he is currently... He's just made it to Vizima. Or not Vizima, um... He's made it out of Azima. He's now in Velen. So I'm, I'm, I'm helping him through it. He's playing it on Death March difficulty because he likes games hard. I saw you firing it up, so I may do that. Hell yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, thank you for the $5, Larry Banks. Trans Daughter of Water, thank you for the tier one gift sub to Phoenix88. Very kind of you. Very based. Thank you so much for the $5. Said, um, here you go, comrade. K. Kalinka, comrade. I appreciate it. Listen, I'm, I'm not much for the, uh, for like the, the Russian, like USSR Soviet LARPing on the left, but, you know, if you're, if you're giving me money, I won't complain about it. Yeah, I, I, will, I, won't, I won't complain if you do it when you're giving me money. I'll, I'll complain about very few things you do as you hand me $5. Like, you could punch me in the face while handing me $5, and I'd be like, oh, you asshole, but also, thanks, I'm going to go use that to buy a monster. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I'd hit you back, but you gave me that $5, so I'm going to take it and go. That's true, but by that point, if he's fallen in love with the story, he won't mind, Valth. He'll just kind of accept it as like an action RPG, which is what it's meant to be. Um, he loves Cyberpunk. That's the thing, Valth. Like, Cyberpunk is literally one of his favorite games of all time. He is a massive Cyberpunk defender. He will fight you if you say Cyberpunk is bad. He will legitimately destroy you in a debate on that topic. Um, so, like, he's played through Cyberpunk maybe five times now, like, all the way through. Um to get like different endings and different stories and see how it goes. So I think I think once he gets to the Bloody Baron storyline, he's going to fucking fall in love with the game. Cuz like nothing all that crazy special happens up until you get to the Bloody Baron storyline and you meet Kira and you get introduced to like the bog witches and stuff and from there it's I, I think it just gets better and better I imagine, especially with how many different characters there are. It's a massive cast. Ethan's a big fan of that kind of thing, so I'm excited to see what he thinks of it. He is completely blind on it. The cyberpunk comeback was so good. I mean, it never went away. It was just like a buggy launch, you know? Besides that, it was... Uh, I mean, The Witcher 3 had a pretty buggy launch, too. You just have to remember that because expectations were so low for The Witcher 3... Like, The Witcher 3 was a hype launch, don't get me wrong. Everyone was playing it, it was huge at the time, but the standards were very low, the bar was very low. Anything better than The Witcher 2, which was a very low bar, let's be honest, would have been amazing. And so when it dropped, and it was the amazing game that it is, the masterpiece of a game that it is, but it had, like, serious glitches. Yeah, people called it The Glitcher 3, yeah. Um, and it had serious glitcher, glitches and bugs, and it still kind of does in some cases. Like, Ethan's had some, like, I gotta restart the game because, like, grass isn't loading type bugs, and he has a perfect PC. Um, yeah, like, there's still bugs with that game. Like, I hope, like, CD Projekt Red still patches it over time because it could still use a little bit of work in some respects. There's some bugginess to it, some jank. You know, especially, like, with certain visual jank. You know, nothing, like, game-breaking. Just, like, huh, my immersion just got broken by what is otherwise a very beautiful-looking scene and, and, like, game. Uh, now there's, like, a horse, like, flying in the air behind me. You know? Like, it's rare. doesn't happen often. Like, maybe once a play session. But when it does, it's just like, ah, oh, man. They patch it two or three times a year. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I imagine it's not their top priority, but it's such a big game. I imagine they got to continue supporting it. Um, uh, 
didn't start getting big eyes till after The Witcher 3 fixed most of the bugs. The worst part, the worst bug is when music and sound get mixed up and, like, no listening to Priscilla's voice and instead farting peasants. That's fucking hilarious. That is really, really funny. Yeah, no, I've encountered weird audio bugs once or twice that just involve, like, the music will just cut out and stop playing for a little while. And it's just like, okay. And then I'll enter a new area where it like starts a new sound, like music cue. And then the music will start like a cut scene will happen. And then it'll start the music again. Um, that could be a setting though, but the way it cuts off is very abrupt. Like it just goes do and the music is off for like half an hour. Anyway. Oh, my nose. It's itchy. Guys, I shaved today, and my nose is still itchy. What is this blasphemy? Happened to me on my first playthrough? That's funny. Yeah. All right, everybody. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three. Two. One. Action. Alright, I just got sent this in chat, and it definitely caught my eye. Vladimir Putin reportedly orders exploration of Russian games console. The consideration is reportedly part of a plan to develop Russia's native games industry. Per Russia Today, granted Russia Today is not the most reliable source, it is a literally Russian state media, like, like literally, um, but obviously there's not really much of a motive to lie about anything here besides maybe some fluffing of Putin. Putin's order was issued following a meeting earlier this week in which he instructed the government to, quote, weigh requirements for organizing production of both stationary and portable games consoles in Russia. That's right, guys, they're trying to make the Putin station, or the Putin box. The deadline for executing the order has reportedly been set for June 15th, 2024. Damn, we're getting the Putin box soon, guys. We're getting that shit soon. As part of the order, the president also called the cabinet of ministers to look at developing an operating system and a cloud system for delivering games to users, according to a statement published on the Kremlin's website. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov explained that the president's order to consider the creation of a Russian console was aimed at developing Russia's native gaming industry. Several high-profile gaming companies ceased operating in Russia in 2022 following the country's invasion of Ukraine. Sony, Microsoft, EA, Activision, Blizzard, Nintendo, and more all removed themselves from the area due to the geopolitical climate. That's actually surprising that, um... Uh, Blizzard did it because like isn't Blizzard very uh, friendly with China and isn't fr like China relatively friendly with Russia Interesting interesting. I guess not direct enough for uh, China to consider it not anymore You're right because ever since the invasion of Ukraine Russia and China haven't been getting along as much. You're right You're completely right. I remember that as reported by PC mag Russian newspaper Commerçant reports that Putin has likely entrusted the Russian technology company VK to carry out the plan. You know, you can say this is a complete joke if you want, but isn't uh, Tetris a completely Russian game? Like Tetris, the video game, one of the video games of all time, was made by a Russian, wasn't it? Or did it just get popular in Russia? Doesn't the term from Russia with love come from the like front of the box for Tetris? It, maybe it existed before that, and that's why they used it on the box, but I could swear that's where the term comes from. It's at least the first ever usage of the term I can remember. The theme, like the the Tetris music is a Russian folk song made into 8-bit music. Yeah, I'm aware of that. that. That's a really cool detail about that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, but one of the most uh, like common American household names household brands was literally just blasting Russian folk music in 8-bit in people's living rooms back in, like, the Cold War era. Yeah, what is the story behind that, by the way? I th Here, let me bring up a video on that, because it's actually quite interesting.
The story behind Tetris is actually quite interesting. There's a, um... Hmm. We're not watching a Watch Mojo video. This video seems fine. Here, let's finish the article first. However, the newspaper states that market participants say that there is no comp competence to produce their own PlayStation and Xbox consoles, and creating such a system from scratch will take up to 10 years. What they're not understanding here, what Putin doesn't understand apparently, is that creating a game console is not an easy task. What you're essentially doing, and this is a gamer talking about this stuff, not a game developer, but I know, I know a few game dev, I know a few game devs, you know, I know a couple game devs, I'm kind of a big deal. Um, and my understanding is that when it comes to console development, it's quite difficult because on one level, um, what you're basically making is a gaming PC, but a gaming PC that is made to run a specific way, run off of a custom in-house operating system, and is made to take the most advantage of the hardware it has as possible when running the games that it's going to run as possible. So you have to already have a manufacturer of high quality parts. This ranges from like power supplies and power bricks. Like for example, Xbox had a big problem with this back in the day where having an internal power supply was like they couldn't figure that out. So the old Xbox 360s had this big fat brick you had to plug in as like a middle point to hooking one up to the wall because that was their power supply. Like you couldn't just hook it up directly because there wouldn't be enough power flow. It had to have like in a backup storage of, of power. And um, the PlayStation 3 was always able to have it inside of there. But that's one whole issue is figuring out how to make a small form factor um, way of like keeping all of these parts right on top of that once you get the form factor small you have to think about cooling cooling something that small with powerful parts is difficult and then of course you have to worry about the fact it needs to be efficient because a game console has to release and have at least eight to ten years of lifetime of like you know uh um uh what's the term for it future proof uh ability right it needs to still be able to run games up to 10 to 12 years in the future, right? When they're gonna cut off the releases for new games on that console, because it's just not good enough to run them anymore and it's practically scamming people to even sell copies for it. So um, at that point, you have to find a way to get the game companies to work with your console company so that they will develop the games for your console. This isn't just a matter of Putin needing them to make consoles and just ship them out and you just throw games in there. These companies would have to develop the games for those consoles specifically, made to run on the operating systems of those consoles, the Putin box, whatever, specifically. We're talking about, at the very least, 10 years of development time this is going to take. Let's say they use RTX uh, 4090s in it. They have to go through the whole process of getting like an operating system made. They have to reduce the form factor, keep a good, decent cooling, and prevent there from being like the Xbox 360 red rings of death that like type issues. And then they have to get these games companies that are making AAA titles that people actually want to play interested in actually playing uh, or, or making their their games for that platform. Otherwise, who the fuck's gonna buy the Putin box when it has no games? Then again, like we said before, Tetris is In a Russian era. game, and Tetris came from, or Tetris is like one of the games of all time. Can't really deny that. Russia has a decent... Tarkov is a Russian game. Like, you have to admit, Russia does have a pretty decent history when it comes to game development. I am a, I am a fan of a fair amount of Russian games. 
Of endless video game adaptations comes the true story of one of the world's best-selling video games. Apple's Tetris takes us on a wild journey following the guy who played Elton John into the depths of Soviet Russia. So in this video we'll be separating fact from fiction and comparing the movie and its characters to what really happened. So grab some vodka and let me blow your cartridge because I this is this one movie. wild ride. Meet Hank Rogers, the owner of Bulletproof Software who discovered Tetris at the 1988 Winter Consumer Electronics Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada. After playing he was immediately hooked and was put in contact with its exhibitor, Britain's Maxwell Communications. This is where Robert Maxwell comes in, the company's founder and chairman who also happens to be the father of infamous child abuser Ghislaine Maxwell. So basically a family of upstanding Small world citizens. You'll notice some of the characters, including Russian leader Mikhail Gorbachev, refer to him as a politician. That's because Robert Maxwell was a member of British Parliament from 1964 to 1970. Some of the more confusing aspects of the Tetris movie is who owned the rights to the game, what those rights entailed, and how all this worked during the backdrop of the Cold War. The game was created by Alexei Pajetnov in 1984, when he was working at the Soviet Academy of Science in Moscow. During this time, with rare exceptions, intellectual property was owned by the state and not the individual. So the the rights for the game were transferred to a state-run organization called Electronorg Technica, or ELORG for short. This was the organization responsible for managing computer software exports from the Soviet Union. In comes Robert Stein. Think of this guy like a video game leech. He'd travel all over the USSR looking for good games, purchase- Next thing he's gonna tell me is this guy is uh, actually Bobby Kotick's grandfather. Uh, Bobby Kotick, the ex-CEO of Activision Blizzard. Um, this is his great-grandfather. Uh, it'd be even funnier if, like, Bobby Kotick had some kind of, like, ancestry going back to Nazi Germany. That'd be even funnier the rights from Elorg and then resell those rights to distributors across the globe. Now, when you buy these rights... Alright, he's mostly talking about the movie here, but overall, the point is, there is a lot of reason why many people, especially back when Tetris came out and was really popular, didn't know it was a Russian game. Like, they didn't know. And they didn't know that, like, the music is Russian folk music. So I find that funny. It's just a cool little little gaming Easter egg. I don't know how this is going to go, honestly. Maybe this ends up going really well. To be fair, Russia is a very powerful country in the grand scheme of things. They have a massive population and a relatively strong economy. Um, there's a pretty big population of gamers in Russia. Clearly, that's why Putin is having this type of response. We could see some pretty big, what are now considered indie companies, get state funding due to this. And we might see, like, a Putin Box 360 Tarkov port that ends up selling millions of copies across Russia. We could see, like, a, um, what's another Russian game? Daisy was was Daisy Russian? I feel like Daisy's a Russian game. Is Daisy a Russian game? Metro? Yeah, Metro. You know that could, that could be a big thing. Daisy's not Russian. Was it Arma that was Russian made? I'm certain it's either Arma or the DayZ mod or, or standalone are made by Russians, okay? Like, something, some DayZ or Arma-related thing is made by Russians. Stalker is Ukrainian, I believe. That's a Ukrainian dev team, and I, I may be wrong, though. I could have sworn... Is, is Stalker... DayZ is Czech? Okay. Atomic Heart? Yeah, Atomic Heart's a Russian team. Yeah, you're right. Stalker is definitely Ukrainian, yeah. I forgot TBH, yeah. Ukrainian. I'd love a Russian hockey game. That could be interesting. Regardless, though, this is just another way that Putin and Russia in general are just trying to spread their influence and kind of get in to industries that have other... We're actually seeing this right now with um, Saudi Arabia as well. The, like, current Prince of Saudi Arabia has, like, 5,000 hours in Dota 2 or something like that, and is a massive gamer, and is pushing heavily to use state funding in order to, uh, invest in, in, like, esports, buying out large game, uh, 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 like, uh, what, what's the term for it, um, leagues, they're buying out leagues for these games, 
uh, much like one might buy out a sports team, and profiting off of the success and enforcing their culture and rules, of course, as well, onto esports. Hey guys, how much do you want to think? How much do you want to bet the Saudi uh, Saudi Arabian prince-owned esports team is going to allow any women to compete on their team? How much do you want to bet they'll allow that when Saudi Arabia funds them? I don't know. I don't know. How do you guys like that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. Thoughts, chat? They let women wrestlers perform now, so maybe. That's... Listen. Guys will accept women wrestling if it means that they're, like, you know, rolling on the ground on top of each other and shit. That's... There's very different reasons for why guys will allow that. Allowing women to play video games professionally and competitively, that's gonna take a lot of convincing for men to allow without any pushback, okay? Thank you, Cleaver120. Yeah, papers please for the Putin Box 360. Yeah, if they don't start calming down over there in Ireland, I'm going to have to go over there and solve all that. I'm going to have to become king of Ireland. I've been meaning to go over there and conquer those people. Those of you guys that don't know, my friend Ethan... I believe is a knight of Sealand. For those of you guys that don't know, Sealand is a semi-recognized, not really country, but country on an oil rig off the coast of, of the UK. And um, my friend Ethan is friends with somebody who is best buddies with the family that owns that like oil rig and owns Sealand. And so his buddy was made a lord of Sealand and so, <laughs> Ethan's buddy, who is a lord of Sealand, made him a knight of Sealand. Which technically, if Ethan wanted to, he could make me his squire of Sealand. I'm gonna ask him that. I'm gonna ask him if I can be a squire of Sealand. Because he he, that's his decision. Like, a knight chooses their squire. So yeah, me and Ethan, Knight and Squire of Sealand, are going to go over and conquer Ireland. Our first step. Simply step one of the grand plan. You know, if you said anyone else, I wouldn't believe you, but you said it was... E yeah. Ethan is fucking crazy, because combined, the amount of connections we have, I'm pretty sure we're three degrees of separation from everybody. Maybe six at the most. Like, everybody who is somebody. Like, like... Ethan has edited for and made scripts for and, like, just known so many content creators that are, like, big, like, especially within the realm of the Minecraft sphere. Um, just, like, talked to them before, known them, been in discords with them. Um, and, and, like, on top of that, strangely enough, I can't say who, but a weird amount of people that he's met are close to big YouTubers. And through information he's gotten from them, I have learned things about big YouTubers that would come out and become public years later. And some things that have never come out and become public. But I know he's not bullshitting me because he has told me things that, that ended up coming true word for word, bit by bit, point by point, years later that he could not have known unless what he told me was true, that he knows somebody that is close to that person, you know? Mr. Beast, I don't know, honestly, three degrees of separation from Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast uh, knows Captain Sparkles, I'm almost certain of that. And Ethan has interviewed Captain Sparkles, and I'm buddies with Ethan. So, yeah, like three or four degrees of separation there to Mr. Beast. And honestly, I might even be like one degree, because I, I think I know YouTubers that are friends with Mr. Beast. I'm pretty certain. 
not like friends with, but know him. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure at least a couple YouTubers that follow me or that I have spoken to, not like friends, like super good friends with them or anything, have spoken to and are on like at least the same level with Mr. Beast. So there might be as much as like one layer of separation between me and Mr. Beast, but like, yeah, it'd be that way. Aren't you only seven degrees from Hitler? That is true. Through my association with Vosh, I think I am like eight degrees away from Hitler. Um, yeah. No, you're not wrong there. Yeah. I think it has to do with Vosh talking to Sam Cedar, and then Sam Cedar talking to someone else, who talked to like someone else, who talked to like Churchill, who talked to Hitler. Who talked to Stalin? Who talked to Marx? I think. I think that's how it goes. I think Stalin talked to Marx. I don't know if that would work, though, because I don't think those times were close. I'm pretty sure Marx was dead by then. <laughs> I don't think that works. It's like there was some more layers there, but Marx is on the list, too. No, I know the six degrees from Kevin Bacon thing, but like I'm talking about how many degrees I, I am away from specifically Hitler. Marx was long dead. Damn it. Why would you spoil that? Why would you spoil that Marx dies? I was literally just about to read, like, his entire written works, and you just spoiled that he dies. What the fuck? You know what, for that, have you read the Bible? Well, if not, guess what? Jesus dies. I'm going to spoil it even harder for you. Not only does Jesus die, but I'm going to spoil it they bring him back. He gets resurrected. I just spoiled the entire Bible. I just spoiled the entire Bible for you. Easter ruined lazy writing, TBH. Yeah, I don't know what George R. R. Martin was thinking there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he's thinking with that one. What's this? Oh no, I'm very familiar with this fact. Not really segment worthy, but I'm familiar with that Lefty Jenna. Uh, Satanon, he's just busy right now. A lot on his plate. Currently planning a big trip. Hanging out a lot, watching a lot of shows. He's editing for me. There's just been a lot on his plate. He's not playing FF14 as much right now. But he'll get back into, like, an FF14 kick where, like, all of his free time he's playing uh, FF14. It'll be back on. Trust me. Trust me. He gets on and off of it. Sa same thing with me. With, like, any MMO. I don't, like, cur like daily play MMOs. I get into them for, like, a three-week to two-week phase where I'm just, like, playing it nonstop. And then um, I'll, like, get a little burned out and I'll take a break. And then from there, you know, uh, whatever happens, happens. I'll probably, like, take a while off and get back into it and get back, like, super into it and binge it for, like, two weeks. It's just how I am with a lot of games, especially MMOs. The Bible is an overrated story and it doesn't go anywhere. We're su well, supposedly, according to the Bible, we're currently seeing the, like, the, the rest of the story right now. It's the present. Supposedly, according to the Bible, the ending is yet to be written. Yeah, birds aren't real. You know that, right? They're literally government drones, the Cyberus. Like, birds literally just, they aren't real. They're, they're drones. Why are you falling for government prop? Are you a Fed? Are you Fed posting in my chat? Everyone knows birds are, are robots. No, especially the penguins. The penguins are how they're uh, they're guarding the uh, South Pole from uh, uh, and you know that's the edge of the planet where all of the um, where like the ice wall is and you'd fall off the edge because the Earth's flat. The penguins are actually uh, the government spy cameras. To keep, because you can't, obviously, we, everyone knows you can't go to the South Pole. Like, any footage where anyone has gone to the South Pole that you offer to show me, 
um, doctored and faked with a green screen. Um, yeah, real, true. I'm not even joking though, that is exactly how those conspiracy theorists online argue. They're genuinely insane people. Yeah, the penguin people are guarding you, like, away from the lizard people. They don't want you to know about them. Yeah, horses are also robots. Don't tell Vosh that, though. I saw one guy who thought sunflowers were spy cameras. They do look somewhat spy camera-esque, to be fair. You know, I feel like they could hide, like, a little spy camera in there. I love how Antarctica has their own accent. They do. Penguins are just ocean spy cameras. Exactly. Xan is hosting government drones for a tax write-off. Exactly! The government is paying me so I can, like, re use my, qu my quail coop as a uh, drone recharging station. Fox News interviewed someone who believed that all birds are robots. You mean someone who knows? There also is no such thing as Finland. If you believe Finland exists, what are you even doing? Grow the fuck up. What, do you trust everything the government tells you? Okay. <laughs> that had to be a troll. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm being sarcastic or do you think I'm being serious? I, re I really am curious what you guys think. I, I, I must know. Can you guys tell? Did I miss the Hassan, fe Hassan segment? No, you have not. You have not missed the Hassan segment. As a matter of fact, we're going to prepare for that right now. One sec, chat. I'm just getting the next segment prepared. God, why is this fucking video so hard to find? Probably gonna have to look it up on Twitter to find this particular clip. Son is no doubt taking it down. Got a lot of, lot of links I gotta bring up for this one, guys. Oh boy. This segment's gonna be well prepared, though. Got a lot of, lot of things to show ya. I go all out for my Hassan hate segments, okay? Hey, Delancer, good to see ya, good to see ya. 
It's all good, Heavy Gretel. It's all good. People come and go as they please. It's, uh, do, 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 do. God. Ugh. Oh. It's one clip. Man, Twitter search is also unusable now. Ugh. Okay. I just found the best Reddit thread for the sake of uh, gathering the clips I need. Oh, good. He did delete that video. I'll be sure to include that uh, point. Nice. All righty, we are almost ready to go. Got a lot of clips ready for you guys. Oh boy, I'm excited for this one. I love Hassan hate segments. <clears throat> Alrighty. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. Alright, if you don't know that I do not like Hassan at this point, and you've been watching me for a while, then y you've basically been, been dodging hay in a haystack. Uh, like, I, I, it, it, the, the likelihood of that is the same likelihood as, like, walking up to a wall and all the atoms in your body perfectly aligning uh, in such a way where they fit, like, like, puzzle pieces exactly in the gaps between the atoms of the wall, allowing you to phase through it. Uh, which is technically a thing that could happen, apparently. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Someone told me that once, and uh, the internet never lies. Uh, very unlikely. Very unlikely thing. But I do feel that what happened today 
that has gone viral is justifiable enough for me to do another Hassan hate segment because they're some of my favorite segments to do because unfortunately Hassan, despite what we're about to discuss, is, you know, still one of, if not the largest figure in all of left-wing alt media on the internet, right? And that's a big problem considering the fact that Hassan is a fucking idiot with horrible, horrible opinions. Now, if you don't believe me uh, when I say that there is a silver lining, then don't worry, I've got some proof for you guys. Hassan has actually, for about a year now, maybe two, frankly, ever since he burned the bridge with Ethan Klein, Hassan has been falling off. His numbers have dropped across the board. He has clearly been getting angrier and depressed and burned out over the fact that his numbers are, have dropped which is not helped by the fact that the amount his numbers have dropped has been like, he's dropped down to above five figure viewers still. So even though he's like fallen off quite substantially, he's still getting five figure digit viewer counts on many of his streams, even what he complains about as being his worst streams. So if he just learns to not compare everything he does to his best ever performing content and just have fun with doing content and not be obsessed with the clout, he wouldn't be, like, basically speeding up his own downfall like he's been doing. But the reason why we know he's falling off are uh, these messages that have been getting tossed around a lot lately, and believe me, they are not the only ones. Um, he's been saying stuff like, I'm so sad, I think the streams are bangers, but people just don't see them. He's talking about his IRL streams he's been doing at the uh, Palestine marches in... Uh, Australia, the pro-Palestine marches, something that, like, Hassan has yet to understand is that his audience has absolutely no interest in the actual issues that he is talking about and discussing. It's all virtue signaling for them and entertainment and a game. And so when you're not doing, like, sitting on stream, talking shit, calling people genocide deniers or, or genocidal for not hating America and hating Biden, and, like, having meltdowns over liberals on stream, the people that Hassan has built his audience off of don't want to watch. They don't want to see him actually at a pro-Palestine protest, like marching and, and doing something that is like arguably productive uh, for the cause. They want to see him on like sitting in his chair, talking shit, making drama, because that's how he built his career. We used to be a community. I hate what my community is becoming. I swear Twitch streaming isn't about the actual content. It's about whether people want to pay attention to you or not. And clout, yes, obviously. But, like, he's saying this because he's mad, not because he's making, like, a genuine uh, sort of evaluation of how the platform operates for the sake of, like, uh, making points. All that shit was a banger, and 13k watched like I'm fucking gaming at 8pm. Dude, Hassan is the best at being the most entitled, unable to read the room motherfucker ever. Look, even the people in the replies, like they're, like this guy, there's a 10 people who replied with just like Pepe La L or, or Pepe L or whatever the term is. Is it Pepe La? Is that what that is? I, I don't know what the what the emote is when it's like a blurry Pepe laugh. Anyway, um, like, of even people in his own community are calling him a whiner for that. Like, I get, if I got 300 viewers while gaming, I would be like, oh, damn, you guys are liking the gaming content. Let's go. I'm, I'll, I'll prolong stream a while longer if 300 people want to stick around and watch me play video games. Sure. Like, that, that's so... I, something that I taught myself is to never look at my viewer count, never care about my viewer count, and just focus on making good content and getting that good content out consistently and frequently on YouTube. And if I just focus on that, the success will follow, and it always has. Unfortunately, it seems like Hassan is the kind of streamer who's probably constantly glancing at his view count, constantly looking at chat for affirmation, asking like, Oh, what should I say here? What should I say there? Really worried about offending anyone in his chat. When anyone in his chat does upset him, he screams at them, dude. He screams at people in his chat when he gets upset. 
A good example is what you're about to see in a moment. You're probably wondering, Zan, why are you shit-talking Hassan? Why are you, you know, just sort of like uh, reveling in the downfall of his channel? And obviously he is falling off. Uh, the reason for this is that Hassan and I do not agree. Outside of like a tepid agreement on certain social issues, which Hassan does not actually value enough to override his, like, dog shit opinions. Like, Hassan's desire to own transpho transphobes will never override his desire to own Democrats by not voting Biden and letting Trump win, for example, right? So where we do agree is so inconsequential and, and has no real impact on the world that I don't really see it as, um as worth looking the other way with this guy like I, I i should treat him frankly like i would any conservative pundit because he's just out there making a bad name for lefties um stuff like this is why folks like vosh dead domain i don't know who dead domain is and our very own xander hall are only very likely to see a significant amount of growth as Hassan see an insignificant amount of growth as hassan's more reasonable watchers side jump ship oh are likely to see a more reason um a uh, decent amount of growth. Um, I don't know. I think most of the ex Hassan fans will either just like move on with their lives and not watch political content or move on to like someone else who is just as bad. Like they'll move on to like Noah Samson or something, you know? They'll find somebody who just kind of fills in that gap. You have to understand that like 80% of Hassan's appeal was literally sex appeal. Like most of Hassan's chatters like, if you just pull the chat, how many of you are horny for Hassan? Pretty much everyone in the chat will say yes. Like, a fair amount of them even think he's a fucking idiot, and the only reason they watch or defend him is they find him attractive. As a straight man, I'm immune to this. I can see straight through all of his, like, non-existent charisma. I guess I can see through his, like, biceps at the horrible person he is on the inside. He's not very close to the surface, I should mention, uh, how horrible of a person he is. He doesn't hide it well. For example, the ongoing Russia apologia he did during the invasion. I have actually gone out of my way here to gather a sort of, like, timeline of his rhetoric around Russia and Ukraine. And it, it is very stark. This was when the first reports of Russia mobilizing an offensive against Ukraine happened. I'm assuming you were saying you're right on the Ukraine, but how so? Russia and Ukraine can't go to the fucking war. It's ridiculous. This idea that Russia is going to do a land invasion into Ukraine is psychotic, okay? They just, that's not going to happen. And the only people that want that to happen or act like it could potentially happen are Western backers of war, okay? People that are far away. People that will stand to benefit from this because they're going to sell weapons. That's the reason why people that already have a complex trade relationship with Russia like Germany or even France are not going buck wild about uh, 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 and, and trying to escalate tensions. Non-existent charisma is kind of much, lol. Hassan is a funny guy. No, 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 no. Hassan is not funny unless the joke is laughing at him, okay? I have never in my life laughed at a Hassan joke. I've only laughed at things that are laughing at his expense. The funniest thing Hassan ever did was slam his desk and scream. That was the funniest thing he ever did, and that's laughing at him, not with him. What the hell is that back slouch? You gotta make sure your your chair is, like, very uh, straight up with its backrest so you can just lay, lean back into it and you're sitting straight up by default. I am expending no back muscles right now to be sitting up straight. I'm trying to goad uh, Russia into doing some shit. Bernie Sanders said it could happen. I don't give a fuck, dude. What do you mean? What, what is Bernie Sanders my god? Yeah, I disagree with Bernie Sanders on it too. Bernie Sanders is still an American politician, dude. He's an American Democrat. He says, he says America bad. stuff uh, that I disagree with all the time when it comes to foreign policy. He goes on about how the invasion is impossible for a while here, but I'm going to cut this clip off because, like, we're not going to listen to him from, like, when, when was it? February 8th, 2022. This was, like, a little bit before the invasion happened. And there's another clip. This is him on February 11th. Um, 
where he continued to double down on his position that Russia would not invade Ukraine. Only at this point, instead of it being U.S. intelligence and uh, NATO intelligence reporting that there were plans to invade Ukraine and reporting that Russia was mobilizing troops, now we were having the Russians setting up military uh, operations at the border and shipping out blood bags. This was like the point where pretty much everybody was recognizing invasion is imminent. We got, we got Ukraine, we got Russia, we got war, baby. We got war, war. What is it good for? A lot. The American military industrial complex machine that basically fucking grinds everyone's gears. You know what I mean? We got to keep those shits polished, baby. That's what war is good for. It's back on the menu never been off the menu really when have we stopped doing wars uh and we will never stop doing wars anyway um we'll talk about the afghan confiscation yeah i did see that i like how the implication here by the way is by default that it would be wrong of the u.s to support ukraine if or when russia does invade something that he obviously believed up until he had to walk all this back the Sydney, Sydney Sweeney photo shoot. And he, he walked it back in like the most non way ever. Do you want me to fucking end the broadcast? I already saw it. I already liked it. It's incredible. It, why are you linked? Dude, we've gone back to two years ago and motherfuckers are talking about a Sydney Sweeney photo shoot. Why is everybody talking about Sydney Sweeney all the time? Who the fuck is Sydney Sweeney? I've never seen this woman in any piece of media ever. Is she just like in that one show that I can't even remember right now? I, I, I don't know. I don't know who this is. Is this just like a Zoomer actor? I refuse to ca I, I refuse to learn what actors Zoomers are into, okay? Thinking it to me right now uh, when I'm trying to fucking cover, uh, you know, pressing matters, okay? You should make series where streamers come on to teach you how to game. Also, thanks for the radicalization. You're crazy. You're crazy. Anyway, that seems to be the end of that clip anyway. But he doubles down again on February 11th. Uh, he proceeds to triple down on it again on February 15th when he tweets uh, in, with a quote tweet of this. Uh, update. Ukraine's foreign minister said on Tuesday that the country's joint diplomatic efforts with Western allies had managed to deter a feared uh, Russian invasion and that diplomacy is continuing to work. So this is like when the war was still very much imminent and there was still some level of like holding it off with diplomacy. No way, dude. That's crazy. Hopefully everyone in my chat who thought war was imminent will now come in with a new perspective, engage in some self-examination as to why you got blindsided by mainstream media's war drums once again. Hmm. I see. Now, he did end up uh, retitling this video, and this video is now deleted. He took this one down in shame. It was called I Was Right About War in Ukraine. Um... On the 16th, he uploaded this, uh, which is a day after he made that tweet. This video is about that, um, the the war being uh, delayed, pretty much, what he thought would be, like, canceled. But before, there was no war, so we're already moving the goalpost at this point. He ended up retitling this video to Russia Still Hasn't Invaded Ukraine Day 11. Um, and, even, and then after that, deleted the video because Russia invaded Ukraine. Now, what happened when Russia did invade Ukraine. Well, he immediately started playing defense for it. Notably, defending Russia's annexation of Crimea. So annexation of Crimea and the war in Donbass were not invasions, got it. Donbass is different than Crimea, and Crimea is an annexation that is, in my opinion, justifiable. It is a part of Russia, okay? You might not believe it. The people of Crimea agree with it, so I don't give a fuck. I don't care about they took what... it with military force. So annexation of Crimea and the war in Donbass were not invasions. Got it. Donbass is different than Crimea and Crimea is an annexation that is, in my opinion, justifiable. It is a part of Russia. Oh, yeah, it's just it's just looping anyway. Yeah. With that said, I, I'm sorry for the light. I can't stop it. I have the blinds as closed as they can possibly be. The sun's just blasting in through this window straight onto the camera. So there's no... It'll pass, though. The sun moves quickly through the sky at this time of day. It will pass. Anyway, um... Yeah. Hassan, in regards to the entire conflict with, um... Russia just was the absolute worst at every turn. He has moved the goalpost at every point in which his positions have become completely undefendable. 
because he knows that he, it won't hold up to the scrutiny of other content creators and he'll lose his audience if he gets decimated too hard. And he has to basically balance the line between um, being the lying uh, audience captured guy that he is that's just trying to play to his audience and make money while at the same time not saying anything so ideologically outside of reality that every content creator on the surface of the sun takes the opportunity to dunk on him for just being completely wrong so he does tend to move the goalpost and walk things back but I don't frankly see that as an excuse Hassan just took a less wrong position as he moved the goalposts that was more defendable at each turn. And, um, gosh, where's that one clip? Hassan being reasonable. Ah, I love this one, too. Eventually, we had the recent explosion in popularity around discussing the state of affairs between Israel and Palestine. This is a decades-long conflict, obviously. There's nothing new about the state of what's going on in Israel and Palestine besides the uh, increased uh, amount of media coverage and the higher casualty uh, numbers. And Hassan, I feel, has kind of spearheaded a very toxic form of Palestine advocacy. You see, I absolutely don't support Israel in their, like, indiscriminate behavior they've had in Palestine. It's very obvious that I, I think most people, even who are a little bit leaning more towards, like, charitability towards Israel, don't like that. The problem is Hassan's entire thing is characterizing all forms of uh, dislike of Hamas or any form of non overt, uh, uh, what's the word for it, um, denunciation of Israel as being, like, a genocidal, like, pig or whatever. Oh, where's that video? Can I find it? Oh, I know, I know, is I know it's in the Willie Mac show video. I'm just gonna play. I'm just gonna play the bit from the Willie Mac show video. It's in here somewhere. Uh, uh, uh. It's in here. It's in here. I know it's in here. I know it's in here. Fucking throwing Ukrainians in a in a in a fucking. So that's it. That's fine. And Hitler annexation does that for comparing Putin to Hitler. You oh, okay? Oh yeah, I didn't even show you guys these clips too. Oh yeah, this is a this is a new clip. Another clip of Hassan uh, doing more Russia apologia, but even later into the timeline than I'd showed you uh, before. Ooh, feeling bad about the Crimean annexation Whoa. does not change the reality of the Crimean annexation being a completely justifiable fucking act by the Russian government. Okay, so that's it. That's fine. And Hitler invaded countries based on Germanic ties at first. Yeah, dude. Talk to me when he's fucking throwing Ukrainians in a, in a, in a fucking... What are you talking about? Talk to me when he's throwing Ukrainians at a concentration camp, okay? Hitler wasn't fucking bad because he decided to invade Austria. He was bad because he was fucking killing Jews, okay? He was bad for both those reasons. The, 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 those were both factors that made him bad. Hey, that was the problem. He wasn't like... He wasn't like, oh yeah, we're gonna fucking annex territory with like Germanic people in it. That wasn't the main problem with Hitler, I think. Who says this? He seems. <laughs> I, I, Willie Mac's a good dude. He's a good dude. His heart's in the right place. He doesn't always hit the bullseye perfectly, but I do think his heart's in the right place. Um, I, I should talk to him more. I should have him on stream, and and infect him with the woke mind virus a little bit. Maybe I should. I imagine many of you guys don't like him, but you'd probably like him a lot more if I was able to uh, inflict him with the woke mind virus. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Um, now, for these reasons, I'm very much happy to see Hassan both falling off, clearly getting burned out, and, God, Hassan just had his own Sneeko moment. 
You guys know what I'm talking about, right? I guess Sneeko moment could mean a lot of things. No, Hassan did not get cucked. I mean, I'm sure he has been cucked, but uh, I, 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 as far as I know, he's not been cucked. Um, uh, but let me see. Let me see if I can find this. Ah, oh, where is it? Actually, no, I'll just play this clip. Um, Hassan's numbers have been falling off a lot. And on top of that, he he has been sort of a representative for a type of advocacy for Palestine that's been very toxic. Very much like, boycott these companies so you look like you're holier than thou. Talk about how any person who does not actively denounce Israel with every other word is like a demon and wants genocide, uh, harass like any celebrity or public figure who has not denounced uh, Israel, regardless of what they're famous for, or what kind of politics, like if they've ever talked politics, like this really weird, like Israel, Palestine's just the current trend type people. Hassan has essentially built his audience to such a point that those are the majority of the people that watch him now. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't surprise you when today, at a protest, a Palestine protest in um, Australia, Hassan got confronted by one of his fans for drinking, I think it was Diet Coke on stream. And what she says to him and his reaction... My God, it's just perfect. The entire internet has been blowing this up. Oh, I was going to show you the Sneeko video. My bad. No, yeah, this is Hassan's Sneeko video. Uh, Sneeko meets his fans. <laughs> yeah, this is Sneeko meeting his oldest fans, by the way. What'd you think? Fuck the woman, fuck the woman! What? Fuck. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, wait, wait, wait. We love women, we love women. We love women. We love women. But not, not like transgender. Yes, sir. We love everybody. Okay. No, no. All gay should die. Fuck yeah, 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 march, preach. <laughs> so, a moment where Sneeko just absolutely had to cringe on camera at, like, meeting the audience that he has cultivated. Because it's very easy to distance yourself from the consequences of your advocacy and how bad they are when you're just on the internet and you never have to see the people that are listening to your stuff. Um, now, Hassan has had his own Sneeko moment, uh, only with just one fan confronting him and uh, on stream. And... This is, I would say, Hassan's most outside, living life, not terminally online fan. I need you to understand that. This is a Hassan fan that actually goes outside. What do you think the ones that you'll never see out in the world in your entire life are like? Watch this. Prepare to laugh and cringe. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to really say, you here. need to stop drinking Coke Zero on stream. Why? It's boycott. Wait, is it? You're preaching pro-Palestine and you're drinking all these boycott stuff. Please, Hassan, <laughs> at least pretend. Do it off stream, please. Okay, I'll put, it in, I'll put it in a glass. <laughs> is Pepsi okay? No! Is <laughs> I love how, how she hit him with the Australian no. No! No! <laughs> God. Okay, I'll put it in. I'll put it in a glass. <laughs> is Pepsi okay? No. Is it? Okay. No soda. I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was like that. <laughs> I've been trying to stop it. Isn't that? <laughs> yeah, of course. Dude, the at least pretend, just pretend, because it's all about virtue signaling. It's all about sending a message of how virtuous you are. Hassan, you have to boycott this company. You have to not drink this soda because they don't denounce Israel. I I really need you to understand these boycotts, like doing this whole like public boycotting thing. It is just as cringe, just as pointless, and you are just as worthy of being made fun of for it as the people who burned their like their their fucking NFL stuff because um 
football players were kneeling during the national anthem. Like, just burning their money away. Or refusing to, like... Or, or, or even just the Bud Light boycott from the right. You're just as dumb. You're just doing it to virtue signal. If you actually want to support Palestinians, donate to the PCRF. Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. Vosh did a charity stream for them once. I think uh, a few streamers have done charity streams for them. Just donate. Go to their website and donate. They are literally, you'll be funding, directly funding, medical care being provided to um, uh, children who have been hurt, displaced, or made homeless by uh, the IDF and its indiscriminate attacks on Gaza. In fact, if you want to learn more about the PCRF, I think Vosh like interviewed the like the founder on stream. I was there. I, I went on that stream as a guest. Isn't it interesting too how all the figures that have promoted these like heavily like this is the trend right now audiences, they all just started talking about Israel Palestine almost exclusively. Like you could you do like a word search on their account and find like no mentions of Israel or Palestine prior to October 7th. You know, like literally nothing. They, they just, it's like they learned about this conflict yesterday. Yeah. Really, really cringe stuff. I'm glad to see Hassan getting absolutely reamed out about it. Um, the tweet, w Willie Mac Show's tweet alone of this clip has 17,000 likes. Uh, mine, one of them. Uh, I, I dropped this comment, this quote tweet. Gotta remember, this Hassan fan goes outside. Imagine what the ones you'll never see out in the world are like. I'm curious, did any Hassan fans get triggered at this? Lamau, one cringe fan and 50 other normal ones come up to him. You people are so fucking weird. I, I love how it's always you people, as if, like, there's some grand conspiracy of anti-Hassan. Uh, where's that one video of how Hassan re, uh, responds to criticism? Hassan responding to criticism. Fuck, where's that video? It's with the Attack on Titan music. Fuck, I can't find it. Does anybody know where I can find that clip? I tried to find it in the Willie Mac show video, but I couldn't locate it. It's so good. If I don't end the video off on that note, if I don't end the video off on that note, I, I genuinely, I will be, I will be so sad. Bro's streaming next to the window to heaven. No, Jesus is just blessing me. You know, it's, it's Easter. And obviously, uh, you know, me and God are pretty tight. That's how I know, like, the future all the time. You guys are always like, how does Zan keep predicting stuff so accurately? It's like, yeah, God's telling me. What do you mean? He's talking to me right now. Tell me what to say. <laughs> That's literally what priests tell their flocks, though. I'm not even joking. Jesus was an intersex man. True. God is a leftist confirmed? Yeah. Dude, God hates Trump. When Trump dies, he's going to hell. You guys know that, right? Like, it's all planned out. Ah, oh, what was the video captured? Or, or captioned? Oh, Hassan speculating. Yep, yep, okay, I found it. I found it. The H3 subreddit comes in clutch. If I make a... 
Now, you can think I'm being too, like, rude to Hassan or whatever. There's a lot of people that like to glaze for him. To be fair, a lot of people have, like, an unironic crush on him. Like, what, like Hassan is, like, I would actually argue the closest male equivalent we have to titty streamers. And that, like, he really has made sex appeal a large reason of why people watch him. Like, legitimately. If Hassan looked more like me... Do you think he'd have the viewership that he has? I genuinely don't think he would. Comment down below if you disagree. If you think Hassan has characteristics that would make him appealing and as watchable as he has been in his peak, um, if it weren't for his attraction. Because when I see his fans talking about him outside of just defending him and glazing for him, it's always talking, like, thirst posting. It's always thirst posting. His Instagram and all of his social media are literally him fighting with people or thirst posting, right? Hassan has only charisma? No, he has no charisma. That's the thing. The fact that you think he has charisma is like a sign of a clear lack of understanding of what charisma is. Charisma is not being attractive. Charisma is having a personality that makes you, makes you attractive. Hassan is hot, but Hassan is a self-admitted rizless loser. He has said that he does not talk to women a lot because he has, like, pretty bad social anxiety. Which, you know, that's not, a, like, a bad thing. That's not something that's, like, a problem I have with him. But, like, he doesn't have a personality. He doesn't have any riz. Um, he also has, like, this really bizarre, like, orbit type deal going on like a lot of the people who orbit him are just attracted to him like i'm not even joking um oh fuck oh am i am i gonna start drama if i say this this could get clipped and start drama uh could i is it is this like dark fucking super like mega drama i could drop here one of hassan's biggest orbiters these days is a streamer called denim so i believe is the biggest female political streamer on twitch Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm right. And um, I used to, ha like, hang out with her a fair amount back in the day, like, years ago. And I remember we talked about Hassan very briefly. And this was before, like, she was, the like, a Hassan orbiter and before she was, like, close to Hassan. She distinctly said to me, word for word, he's attractive, but he has no personality. But now she's, like, I think the biggest Hassan orbiter. So the fact that Hassan is attractive and has clout in part due to that attraction, the fact that he has a fair amount of like connections is a big reason why um, he has the circle that he does and he has the viewers that he does and the, the group that he does, right? I can't wait for that to get clipped and post on like LSF or something. That'd go crazy. That'd go crazy. Anyway, here's Hassan speculating. If I make a prediction or a speculation it can sometimes be wrong idf didn't bomb the hospital yes it did yes it fucking did you fucking piece of shit yes it absolutely did fuck you fuck you genocidal scumbag you have no fucking dignity you do not have an ounce of dignity inside of your soul you fucking piece of shit you garbage monstrous scumbag you garbage monstrous scumbag why did you fucking lie how can you live with yourself you genocidal piece of shit if i make a prediction so good it's so fucking good anyway i'm really curious though i okay i know for a fact i'm going to get a lot of hassan fans hate commenting on this one as they always do whenever i shit talk hassan so if you actually watched all the way to this point in the video and you saw the pieces of evidence of hassan being a piece of shit and of course i hope you you were also forced to watch the video of hassan having that cringe interaction with his fan um then uh comment comment speculating like, use the word speculating somewhere in your comment down below to let me know you watched all the way to the end of the video. I like to know what percentage of you actually watch all the way to the end. You're hotter than him, dude. I, you guys keep saying that, and I appreciate it. I, I Maybe some of you guys genuinely have that opinion, but I would argue, even myself, that Hassan more, uh, more clearly fits the traditional conception of what is an attractive man don't get me wrong twinks are in right now and twink death has not come for me thank god um because then i'd have nothing uh but <laughs> the um 
the uh, uh, I think Hassan probably fall like Hassan hits this kind of mixture of obviously he's very fit, right? I have a feeling he's probably at least taking TRT. He's definitely on steroids, um, but you know he, he's he's quite fit. And, uh, you know, he's, he's in good shape, right? He's got a fairly attractive face, like, on a base level. I mean, there, there's no features he has that drag him down. He could have a stronger jawline, sure, but, you know, not everybody can have the... Not everybody can have this, I'm sorry. Not everybody can have that. However, however, uh, I think Hassan kind of hits this, like, lefty male feminist nerd, like, not very, like, like, he, he kind of has, like, all the parts of, like, traditional masculinity that are, um, uh, uh, tr like, generally quite attractive to women, but in so far as his aesthetic, and I'm not saying he's faking it or anything, but in so far as his aesthetic, he's kind of axed away the parts of, of masculine presentation that might be threatening to women. So he's like masculine, but non-threatening. He's got that like male feminist thing going on. And when I say male feminist, I don't mean like male feminist. I mean male feminist, the, the internet like conception of that, if you know what I mean. Also, look, God stopped uh, blasting me with uh, holy rays. Pretty crazy. I can just survive like a full on, like, uh, you know, full power blast of holy light from God. You know, I'm just kind of built different. Anyway, how'd you guys like that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. Wait, what? I, wait, what do you mean Twink Death hasn't come to you? Xan, IDK, I mean, don't know if you ever did, but also especially you have a scraggly beard, which is super untwink-esque or whatever. I have a scraggly beard, apparently, according to uh, uh, this chatter, unless I have experienced Twink Death. Um, wild how wrong that chat is on multiple levels, but... um. Cool. Cool, cool. At least you have a Giga Chad chin and jawline. I do like this butt chin. In this lighting, you can't see the butt in my chin as much, but if I... Oh yeah, there you go. You can just see the outline of it. Add my money, damn it. I will in a moment, Avalon of Babylon. Calm your tits. Delancer, they, they should be federally charged with um, something for doing that. Uh, Avalon of Babylon, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that. Oh, a three-monther. Thank you, thank you. So that should be $12 dollary dues right there. Thank you so, so much. Very kind of you. So that I have subscribed for three months. Now take my fucking money. Aw, thank you so much. I absolutely will, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let me update the dono goal. Check and make sure I haven't missed any anything. No, I haven't. Cool, cool. Hmm. By the way, chat, if you're watching right now and you're enjoying the segment and want to support me, you can do so for completely free, burning less than a calorie and taking less than half a second simply by dropping a like on the stream. Every single thumbs up you drop on my streams, my videos, everything really does go a long, long way to support the channel. Um, it basically forces YouTube, twists YouTube's arm in a way into pushing my content out in the algorithm to more people. In fact, every time I ask you guys to drop likes and I see like 10, 20, 30 likes come in, even that few, it results in my viewer count going up by like 50 to sometimes 100 viewers um, like quite soon after. So if you're wondering how much your single like counts, 30 likes may get me 50 to 100 more viewers in this stream. So that might put into perspective just a little bit how much your single like actually contributes, which is a substantial amount. It really does help. So seriously, to all of you who go out of your way to just drop a like, even though it's free, even though it's super easy, it really helps so much, and I really do appreciate it. You guys are so kind, and your support, 
I wouldn't be able to do this without your support. I really wouldn't. So thank you. I, in I instinctively like Zan's videos. Thank you. That is the way to do it. That's what I like to see. That's what I do with any YouTuber that I enjoy's content. Like, I just see their video, click it, and before I, like, the before YouTube can even load the video, it's still, like, buffering a little bit, I've already hit the like button. You know? I, I hit that like button before YouTube can even finish loading the page. We have not continued the watch party for From, don't worry. Uh, I tried to do a watch party after the botched uh, call-in stream, and not a lot of people showed up. We had like 20 people arrive, and a lot of people who I know are watching it, like Delancer, didn't arrive. So I decided to go ahead and delay the watch party for those episodes till the future so more people can see it. And uh, we'll, we'll do another attempt at it probably tomorrow night after stream. I'll try to go live a lot earlier tomorrow if I can, and... Um, at least try to get stream done as early as possible so that it's not super late when we start the watch party. And then hopefully we can get a lot of people in. I didn't know it was happening. I uh, pushed it pretty hard in the Discord, but it's all good. Yeah, the earlier I can start it, the more people will be able to show up. Ooh, watch parties. Oh yeah, Heavy Gretel, you haven't been in, like around for a while. You don't know about the show that we have been watching. Um... It's so goddamn good. I'm tempted to restart it so you can see the show from the beginning, but it, it shouldn't ruin it too much if you hop in, like, on episode 7 or whatever we're on. Um, Slashy, thank you so much for the $5. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. The support is very, very helpful. It says, this is what Xander Hall wants to, wants to set up with your money, chat. What is this? Facebook philanthropist. What's this? Is this college humor? How did I get started? Well, how does anyone get started? It may be an invite, or you see it on your friend's wall, but for me, it was... fate? I happened to be looking at my newsfeed at the time, and this was before Timeline was first introduced. You? You're rather young, so you might not recall those days, but it truly was the golden age of Facebook philanthropy. The first cars that I ever liked was a group of unicyclists who were traversing the country to raise awareness for something. I can't quite remember what it was, but something about it caught hold of me. And I remember saying, This is Hassan fans. This is Hassan fans on every issue. John, which is my name, I was talking to myself. You're in a position to help here. You can like this. And I had never liked anything before. I had so many demands on my time. I would always think, someone else will like this. They don't need me. But that- This is also those of you in chat right now who aren't dropping a like on my videos. Exactly, this is you guys, actually. Before you became fans of me and started liking my videos, every video, um, instantly, the second you click in, this is you guys. Uh, you just- you, you thought someone else would like it. But no one will. If you don't like my videos, no one will. Else will like this. They don't need me. But that day, I clicked the button, the words changed to say, you like unicyclists, and it was the most rewarding experience of my life. Prior to that time, I don't think I had so much as lifted a finger to help anyone. Now I had. The sound. This one. Before I knew it, I was liking over a hundred different This is pretty good. From Tanzania forest preservation to teaching sign language to unprivileged chimpanzees and with every like I couldn't escape the feeling that I could do more so eventually I started my own nonprofit organization with over 200 like employees now whose sole purpose is to search for worthy Facebook causes and like them they work tirelessly. Some even have multiple accounts so they can like things several times. It's really quite amazing. Good. Let's see if there's a recycling group we can like. To date, we are responsible for more the trash. than 10 million likes. Imagine that. 10 million. Man, dead internet theory is real. Dead internet theory is so fucking real, dude. I actually think it is. I really do. All right, chat, I will be right back. I have to use the restroom and turn off the space heater because it's kind of cooking me now, but uh, I will be right back.
Just gonna use the bathroom. It'll only take me a minute. Whoa, 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 what's up, gamers? Alrighty. So, for those of you guys who have been sadly unaware, um, I have been doing a series of watch parties in my Discord server, um, you know, like every few days at this point, um, of a pretty awesome, relatively new show. Its second season ended a little while ago. Its third season is coming this summer, so, you know, it's... It's relatively new. The thing about it is, despite being, like, really fucking good, it does not have the level of popularity proportional to how good it is. It's on a very obscure streaming service that many of you might not have ever heard of before, called MGM+. Plus. I bet many of you didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, that's a big part of why not a lot of people know about it, but I discovered it through my, my uh, finding hidden gems within the media realm ability. And it is so fucking good. It is called From. No one in chat spoil anything. Uh, please. Because I know many of you guys have gotten caught up with it. Uh, I highly recommend if you have not already joined the watch parties for this show, you definitely do for tomorrow night's watch party of it. Because even though we're getting in, we're going to be popping in. Hmm. If I can get Heavy Gretel and a pillow there, we might start, I might one more time start from episode one. I know nothing. Yeah, if we get enough people, if we get like a lot of people there, we might start from episode one. Like if a pillow and heavy Gretel are there too, especially, there's no reason not to start from episode one because the people who have seen it already, and most people who've already seen it are fine rewatching it from what I've seen. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, tomorrow after stream, uh, is when we'll be doing the, wa the next watch party. Whether we start from episode one or we pick up where we left off will be determined by how many new folks show up. What time are we watching? I'll set an alarm. Uh, probably around 5 or 6 p.m. PST, if not uh, early, a little earlier, maybe a little later. But I'm going to try to go as early as possible. It's just a matter of how late I get to bed tonight. I'm going to try to get to bed around 9 or 10 p.m. tonight. Anyway, uh, I will show you the trailer for the show. Because the trailer is the most I'm willing to show. Uh, anything more is just too spoilery. The premise of the show... I, I, honest, I wish I could get most of you to watch it without knowing anything about it. But I know most of you are going to want to know at least something about it. Um, this is the premise. Is what it's going to be explained to you. Like most of what you're seeing here is in the first two or three episodes of the show. Um, because like from there it's just... This show is fucking crazy and very addictive. It's impossible to not binge, in my experience. Anyway, here's the trailer. Hey. Please join the watch party. I love this show. I need to get more people into it. Theory... Still got knocked down in a storm or something. The theory crafting? Oh my god. When we're in the watch party theory crafting about this show, it's so fucking fun. Still got knocked down in a storm or something. It's a pretty selective storm. <laughs> What are they doing? Can we just leave, please? Jim! 
in this dirty old part of the city. Maybe we missed the sign for the highway. We didn't miss the sign. When the sun it's a horror mystery. Can I help you? We got on a detour off the highway and cell service around here. Got your family with you? Yeah. I was wondering if you could point me in the direction of the highway. Not a problem. And one thing I know is true. What do you say? Stay on the road. No, no straw hat, Monty. Did we turn somewhere? God damn it. Jim, we're driving in circles. You drove out this way. How did we get back here? Oh my God. Everybody in there okay? This is impossible. That's yeah, funny, Ashram. It is. Where are we? I know none of this makes sense yet. Everyone in this town has been exactly where you are right now. Everyone sees the tree. Those groves. We'll just get out of here, please. Kevin, we are stuck. We didn't come here. We were brought. What are you doing? Nice decayed slab. I'm to see if they moved. If what moved? The trees. It's important for you to understand what happens after dark. Lock your door. Nail your window shut. You do these things, your family's gonna be safe. Safe from what? I've missed you so much. Megan, what are you doing? Maybe I can come in. Megan! This is what happens when you break the rules. There's only so many places we can go. What are they? You believe in monsters? Please don't. A man protects his family. <laughs> Get these people home, Sheriff. This is the best bit of the trailer. Do everything I can. Promise me. It's just called From. Yeah, this show has a lot of white people jump scares. Be aware of that. If you're scared of white people, this show will make you piss yourself. You will be very scared. This show has the scariest scary white people in all of uh, anything. What the fuck? That's awesome. Yes, join the watch party tomorrow. The show goes hard as fuck. If enough new people join, we'll be watching from episode one. So it'll be the perfect time to get into it. Um... The opening song of the show is awesome. Yes, it is. It's a banger. This looks fun. It's so good. It is so freaking good, Heavy Gretel. If you like anything horror, like horror mystery, it's made by the same guy who made Lost. It's so fucking good. It's like Lost, but they're in a town, and there's magic and monsters, evidently. Well, there's definitely monsters, but there's evidently magic. Like, there's some magic shit going on, it seems. That's the most I'll say. The animatronics do get a little quirky after dark. Yeah. All right, let me update the dono goal really fast, and we'll get the next segment ready. And stuff actually happens. Yeah, because the seasons and whatnot are a lot shorter than uh, uh, Lost stuff actually happens. You know, like the pacing is much faster. There are definitely episodes that are more slow, but it's like character development, like in a safe situation kind of slow, where it's like the characters are sort of evolving here so that their next encounter with exciting, scary shit is like more interesting because there's like a developing plot. And like you actually, even though they're not running from monsters at certain points, you're like actually interested in the conversation. What's going on? Is there any filler? Um... Not really. It's kind of... no. There's no filler episodes, that's for sure. Um, it's really hard to say if anything is filler, 
because it's one of those shows where they emphasize the fact that every little question is a puzzle piece, like a, a line, a thread to follow to the truth. Um, I, I, I can't say much more without spoiling it. I'm a bit behind, but this show is giving Curse of Strahd vibes. That is exactly what Ethan said. Ethan uh, hosted, or G I guess G GM, DM'd my uh, Curse of Strahd campaign that I did with them and our friend group. And um, uh, yeah, he he said a lot that when we were watching from, that it felt like some Curse of Strahd shit. Like it felt a lot like the premise of Curse of Strahd. Like the town feels a little bit like Velaki, a little bit. Anyone who's done Curse of Strahd, you'll know what Velaki is and what their deal is and what happens there. Can't say much, or I'll spoil the campaign for you, and I don't want to spoil it. I am playing Curse of Strahd right now. How are you talking and listening to my stream while also playing D&D? How, how are you pulling that off, Slashy? I'm impressive. But, uh, nice. Yeah, sorry if I spoiled the existence of Velaki for you. Uh, it's a place with that name. Yeah, Cleaver120, in our last watch party, we were able to identify all the runes and the talismans. But let's not talk any more about it or, or we'll spoil the show. Let's not talk anymore about that. No more spoilerinos. No spoilers. No more spoil spoilerinos, neighborino. All right. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. All right, everybody. So if you've been online for any amount of time, and especially, especially, especially if you're a woman, especially so if you're a cis woman who's lived your whole life entirely presenting as a woman, chances are you have heard a million times the statistic that the majority of assaults, sexual assaults, and rape committed against women, primarily, are committed by somebody that the uh, victim already knows. And it's not really like a Law and Order episode opening, like there's a woman walking down the street or down an alley, and then all of a sudden she's jumped. Like it happens, but it's not really common. And it's not the type of threat you should be more uh, aware of, you should be more aware of the people you actually know being a potential threat, a potential snake in the grass, statistically speaking, right? However, despite that, this is a pretty disturbing sort of line of stories. You see, in New York City, there has been a torrent of women reporting that they have been punched in the face by just random men on the street. Like, literally just a random guy comes out of nowhere, sucker punches the woman for no reason, and then runs away before she can do anything about it. This st These stories really started getting a lot of traction a few days ago. Um, I'll go ahead and play this bit, but it's been sort of getting even further exacerbated. You guys didn't know about this? I'm surprised you guys weren't aware of this. But yeah, we're... Like, the NYC woman punchers are... are getting more infamous than ever, apparently. The stories are harrowing. I was literally just walking, and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my god, it hurts so bad. College student Michaela Tonato says she was just leaving class in Manhattan. So I just got punched in the face. 
walking home. He hit me right on my cheekbone. This doesn't hurt as bad as the concussion does. She says yeah, she didn't I mean, see it coming. I mean, you've got some visible signs. You have the black eye, but yeah. Michaela, uh, emotionally, how are you feeling? You know for a fact this is not an apolitical string of acts, okay? There are not just some crazy guys or, like, dudes taking bets or, or some gang dudes just running around and, and punching women in the face. This is very clearly some sort of, like, incel trend. For all we know, there's some, like, deep buried, never heard of it incel message board or far-right messaging board out there where they've made it, like, a point of pride or, like, an act of initiation, a rite of initiation, to film yourself or like picture yourself attacking a woman in the street and running away and then posting it on the forum to like get your sort of like that is the kind of shit that some of these more like extreme forums will require i'm talking about more extreme than 4chan kiwi farms maybe even 8chan when that was a thing like th th those are platforms with some pretty fucked up people on there and they love to joke about and glorify this type of behavior but there are some very extreme nothing message boards with like a few hundred if not a few thousand viewers that um like you've never heard of where they have this type of thing as like a rite of initiation hell there was that one guy who was famously pepper spraying women in order to please people on like uh one of those like right wing streaming sites that went belly up a while ago Ah, oh, who is the... Here, before we get even further into this story, I feel we should go back to, like, what I think is affiliated. I honestly feel like pepper spray is so fucking stupid. Like, I actually think pepper spray should be banned and guns should be what women carry instead. Um, because I have seen more stories of man pepper sprays woman before assaulting her way more stories of that than i have ever seen cases of pepper spray saving women's lives it's far more effective when used against animals like bears it would seem because like there are just countless examples of like women getting pepper sprayed before getting assaulted it's like in a, a man who wants to assault women's favorite thing like it's not a deadly weapon so if they get caught doing it and arrested they're not going to get charged with the same thing as if they used a knife a bat or a gun because it's just like it, it, it's pepper spray and so, like, for the same reason that women carry it for self-defense so they don't have to worry about killing someone, men who assault women use it because it makes it easier for them to do what they want to do. Um, if anyone needs me, I'll be hiding under my bed for the rest of my life. Heavy Gretel, you should let me teach you how to shoot a gun because within, like, a day... You will be like, all right, I'm going online. I'm going to research what gun I want. Um, my mom was deathly terrified, anti-gun, did not like guns, horribly terrified of guns, would say, Alex, you have to turn off this video. It has guns in it. I'm going to vomit. Like that, uncomfortable around guns. Um, and then I, I managed to, like, convince her to shoot a gun for the first time as part of, like, my birthday present last year. Now she is currently messaging me frantically whenever there's like a noise outside she doesn't like alex i wish i hadn't left my gut at your house <laughs> i need a gun i really don't feel safe without a gun and it's like yeah once you've felt the like level of like security you have knowing that you're not completely defenseless if someone broke into your house and wanted to kill you like, once you felt the security of knowing that you could actually save yourself and you wouldn't have to hide and call 911 and hope for the best, um, having that level of, like, security taken away, I feel would be traumatic, yeah. Um, she was in a hurry when flying back from here to uh, California, so she didn't pack and fly with the uh, gun on her way back. She brought it here just to shoot with at the range, so she left it here, and it's, like, it's it's somewhere in this room. It's, I think, inside that case. Um so yeah, yeah, sounds a little paranoid. I mean, I, I don't think it's paranoid at all. Um, to be honest, like women have it pretty rough statistically. Most women that you'll have met have been like groped or put in a situation that like if you saw it in a movie, you would be like on the edge of your seat like, she's gonna be okay, right? She's gonna be okay. She's not gonna get raped here, right? She's gonna get out, right? Right? Like, most women you have ever met, whether they tell you or not, have had a minimum scary fucking close encounter where they felt like they were going to be assaulted or raped. 
So I, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that paranoid, to be honest. Here's a noise. Cro calls cross country. Um, well, she doesn't call. She messages me. She texts me. Um, and it's less so a noise and more so that there. It's a whole story. I'm not going to tell you guys like all the details, but she's got. A little bit of a reason to be a little paranoid, but it's probably nothing. My political spectrum is fucked up. I've gone from liberal to red fascist, but now I've achieved my final form of Xanderholism. I worry that you were at those places before, but I was once a chud myself, so I understand, brain, brain guy. And uh, welcome to the club. Welcome to the base Xanderholism club. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, yeah, you definitely, like, I. this is why I want to do firearms content, because right now, if you want to get into guns, you have to watch, like, dipshit conservative YouTubers do it, you know? It's, it, I don't know. It's a whole thing. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to get too stun-locked on this topic here. Man pepper sprays women. I guess that's just what I'll search. Who would do? Incel is attacking women with pepper spray, according to police. Do such a thing. A man walks up to unsuspecting women and terrorizes them with shouts of insults and much worse. When they ask him to go away, he does the unthinkable, pepper spraying them right in the face. The brazen suspect is identified as Johnny Young. He's 25, and police say he is a self-described woman-hating incel. The most recent attacks happened here in the upscale community of Costa Mesa, California. Police say he approaches women, alone or in- Mind you, California, New York, it doesn't matter where you live, there are weirdos everywhere. Just because you live in a blue state or a blue city doesn't mean there aren't very, very red people there groups and verbally assaults them to get attention, all of it on camera. Incredibly, when they defend themselves and fight back, he then claims to be the victim. These two women experienced the attacks firsthand. Emily, who only wants us to use her first name, was assaulted in this video posted by Young. When this guy walked up to you, I mean, he, he, he got more and more vulgar. Yes. And his voice was very scary. I want to when she was pepper sprayed, she punched him in the face and bloodied his nose. In another attack, Jessica Estrada raced after Young when he started her. So let me tell you, if you um, if you tell somebody who's approaching you like this, and he's recording, so you'd be off the hook in their situation if they were carrying a firearm. Here is what they would legally allowed to do, be allowed to do. They would still get taken away in handcuffs because that's how the system works. It, no matter how legal the shooting is, but if they were carrying firearms, as he was walking up to them using what would legally be referred to as fighting words, all recorded by him, um, all they would have to do is say, step away from me now, I don't feel safe. Step away from me now, I don't feel safe. Repeat that three times, and if he keeps getting closer, which he seemed to be doing, um, after like, it depends on the state, obviously. So don't do this in, like, California, New York, New Jersey, that kind of deal. But, like, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, Texas, these are states where this is allowed. Um, I think even Washington, if your life is that threatened, you can. But, like, if they continue to approach you when you are screaming to stay away from you because you, you don't feel safe, um, if he then were to proceed to pepper spray these women, at that point, they would be in full legal allowance to pull out their firearm and shoot him dead on the spot and not allow him to go on and, and pepper spray more women. But, you know, um, I, I, I honestly feel like we need to encourage more women to carry firearms. We need more guns. We need, we need more women with guns. We need more trans women with guns. Harassing her girlfriends. Could you tell he was videotaping you? No, we didn't know at all. After she was pepper sprayed, she bravely fought back. I threw my phone. Yeah, she chased that guy down. It was funny as shit. She chased that dude fucking down. And she's in high heels. He's in, like, sneakers. Incels can't run. Anyway, um, I feel that this situation is probably something very similar to what that was. The guy was literally recording it for the sake of, like, incel clicks on some forum or, or like, right-wing streaming site. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's some online place where this is being done uh, to, like, grow a following or gain validation he's literally just walking and a man that or this just happens all the time and right now it's getting a lot more attention than ever came up and punched me in the face oh my god it hurts so bad 
College student Michaela Tonato says she was just leaving class in Manhattan. So I just got punched in the face walking home. He hit me right on my cheekbone. This doesn't hurt as bad as the concussion does. She says yeah, she didn't I mean, see it coming. I mean, you've got some visible signs. You have the black eye, but yeah. Michaela, uh, emotionally, how are you feeling? No, it's been really, really hard. I think it hits me in waves. A lot of crying because it was really, really scary. The NYPD confirms it is looking into at least four similar cases, like the one shared on social media. In one of them, police say a 40-year-old man has been arrested and charged with assault. I was punched in the head. Not young people. Interesting. One guy's been arrested for it, and he's 40. So, like, we're not talking about some incel forum full of 15 year olds supposedly uh, in new york city um in times square but the police have not linked the cases to the videos in recent days dozens of accounts of alleged assault have popped up online nbc news has not been able to ver it's also hard to say because like you guys know about like the women on tiktok who make ad videos about like how over the top they go to like lock up their home or um like just the super paranoid if you see like a paper on your car immediately get in the car and drive away do not check for it otherwise you'll get chloroformed and kidnapped um if you if, like the ones where it's like a woman telling a story where a lady like rubbed something on her in like a sam's club and she started to feel woozy she says a woman rubbed something on her on her hand that made her feel woozy and she like stumbled her words out to her car and got in and passed out later realizing she was roofied and was barely able to escape. These are clearly made-up stories that, or we're dealing with people with severe mental illness. I'm inclined to believe made up for clout on TikTok, the most clout-hungry platform that ever clout-hungered. Um, so you have to you have to know that there's, you know, women know how to do makeup. There's going to be some people out there that are making up assault stories for TikTok likes. But I also don't know, like, there's no reason to believe that like this torrent of reports came out of nowhere for like malicious reasons it's more believable that these cases have actually happened you know Verify. now there might be a lot more fake cases because it's become like a, a thing people are talking about but from the start th there's clearly a disproportionate increase in this going on right all the videos. The troubling stories surfacing at the same time there has been a rash of violent crimes on the city's busy subways. In response, the National Guard has been brought in to search bags, and 1,000 additional NYPD officers are now riding the trains, too. But the mayor pushing back on the idea that crime is rampant in this city and expressing concerns that social media... Well, yeah, the Republicans have been celebrating this quite a lot. I think Tim Pool's tweet was uh, probably the most disgusting, but most expected. What, what was Tim Pool's tweet? Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. I think it's funny that women in NYC are getting punched in the face. It gets even funnier because uh, a couple days later, you can see the gif here, at a protest, someone pulled his beanie off to reveal his bald-ass head. And uh, in the response to people making fun of him for it, he said he wears the beanie for the same reason that Clark Kent wears glasses when he's not Superman. Because he claims that the beanie makes him less recognizable in public, even though he always wears a beanie in everything we've ever seen him in besides when he's like showing off his bald head in that one photo on 4chan and here where he gets his beanie ripped off. Like, yeah. Anyway, real piece of shit. The conservatives have kind of... The conservatives have long weaponized the fact that crime has always been higher in cities compared to the countryside and more rural areas where, you know, the conservatives have kind of made their base. And the fact is, well, conservatives, they like to demonize this as either best case scenario, they'll blame it on poor Democratic leadership. Worst case scenario, they just outright say it's because those cities have a higher population of non-white people, which is what they actually believe. Now, uh... The right has, of course, already jumped on this. They have this, like, 
narrative that New York City has become so weak on crime that murderers and like shoplifters and uh, like people who steal shit from people's cars are just the cops don't even go after them. They're just left free to go. You can just murder someone in front of a cop on the sidewalk and the cop won't do a thing. Um, they've heavily pushed this idea that cities are crime ridden, like burning down cesspools to a lot of people. Now, a lot of you might remember when during the BLM protests, conservatives were saying that like they burned down this city or that, right? You may wonder like, how do people fall for this? Have they not ever been to a city? Do they really think the cities are burning down? And the fact is there's a surprising amount of people who have legitimately never left the small town they were born and grew up in. I have a friend who's in my friend group with Ethan who lives in a small town somewhere in America, I won't say where, who lives within an hour drive, like an hour and a half drive of a major city, like a major city, and yet has never seen a building taller than three stories in his entire life in, in real life. Cities are a thing he's only seen in movies, video games, pictures, TV shows, etc. He's never seen a city, or frankly even something you would qualify as a town. I've seen his neighborhood, like his town, quote-unquote. In, in the UK, you'd call it a village. If, like, you lived in Britain, if that town was in Britain, you'd call it a village. That's how small it is. There's, like, a population of a few hundred, and it's all dirt roads, and it, it's just super rural. And he's not really left further than like 30 minutes outside of that town and has never seen like an actual city before. Now, this may sound like a unique case, but it's really not. It is not that crazy or unique of a case in America. So many people's lived experience is just that. This friend is going to be able to go to tech is going to be meeting me in Texas uh, when we go to our like big group meetup in May. So uh, it's going to be his first time seeing a proper city is when we go to um, Houston. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, though, uh, like, a lot of people have lived their lives like that, where they've never even seen a city once in their lives. So what Fox News tells them is happening in these cities is what is happening in these cities in their minds. Just like whatever the media is telling me is happening in Europe or outside of America is how I imagine that place. I've never been there before. I can't pull from my lived experience. So with that in mind, um, you got to know, like, the right is already jumping on board to both celebrate the fact that women are getting punched in the face in New York City because, you know, they hate women. They especially hate women who live in progressive places. And, um, yeah, at least three face punchers have been arrested. Thank you for the link, Heavy Gretel. You've got some justice, it would seem. I just got punched in the face walking home. Tonight, the man accused of that harrowing attack charged with misdemeanor assault after allegedly punching 27-year-old Michaela Tonato in the face this week. That nice. arrest comes a day after 40-year-old Skaboki yeah, Stora guy. was charged for this reported assault on 23-year-old Hallie McGookin. I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. Stora, a fringe political candidate who once ran for mayor, has an extensive criminal record, police say. And earlier... Th he ran for mayor. Dude, that's fucking crazy. Misdemeanor, not a felony. This should be a felony. This is too nice. Well, to be fair, it like the, the big thing that New York does wrong is the fact that they don't allow you to have a gun, pretty much. Like, they're, they're super anti-gun there. If she had a gun, she could have shot that guy um, after he laid hands on her. But uh, now, the worst he gets is getting charged with a misdemeanor because he's going to get away with it, assaulting possibly multiple women. This week, a third man was charged, accused of punching a 57-year-old woman in the face. The arrests come as dozens of women have taken to social media, sharing stories of allegedly being randomly sucker punched across New York City. I was punched in the head. Uh, in New York City. He goes, sorry, and then punches me in the head. He spit all over me. The fact that that guy said sorry and then punched her is what makes me feel like these are incels on some incel forum somewhere doing a rite of passage. And, then and I bet they're recording it too. Punched me in the side of the face. 
The trend placing many women on high alert. It makes me feel like a little bit paranoid. It's definitely been scary. Overall crime in the city is down, but data shows misdemeanor assault. That is true. That is true. Crime is down in New York City. Crime is down just generally across the country substantially and has been dropping since the 90s. Um, like the conservatives fear mongering about crime. They can't pull from data. There are no graphs showing like spiking crime they can point to like they could back in the 80s and the 90s um, for like their fear mongering. Now they have to use stories. They have to use specific anecdotal stories of like crimes happening. And uh, yeah, out of curiosity, how do you start getting into guns? How do you start getting into guns? That's a pretty broad question. I'll answer it more in depth after my segment ends. Queen Crimson, uh, hold on to that thought and please at me and remind me of it in chat after I finish this segment so I can tell you. Because I actually would love to tell you guys how to get into guns. That would be great. Um, yeah, this is genuinely despicable. I, I'm really curious, like, if you guys think that women who feel they should be armed... Um, or feeling paranoid when they go out in public, if you think they're being paranoid, if you if you think it's, like, justified caution and concern, or if it's paranoia. Because, frankly, I mean, I look behind my shoulder every 15 to 30 seconds when I walk down the street to go to the dispensary, and I live in a nice-ish area, you know? I mean, there's crime, but there's not a lot. Um, so it's just, like, I, I feel it's justified, but I'm curious what people in the comments when this goes out in a video, as a video, think. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people have been jumping onto the train of sort of like maybe overcorrecting a little bit due to TikTok like crazies talking about how like everything is a sign you're going to be kidnapped and sex trafficked, you know. And, and one thing that does suck is that sex trafficking as well is the issue that I think people need to have the most realistic view of. And I recently saw a story about how... Um, uh, like there are a lot of women working with like nonprofits that are trying to raise awareness about sex trafficking to de like beat the stigma created by movies like Taken that um kind of paint sex trafficking and kidnapping as more like this you know you get kidnapped off the side of the street and put in a van and you're never seen again type thing which happens of course everything ever has happened but um. More commonly than not, it's like exactly what happened with Andrew Tate. It's the lover boy method, grooming, getting a woman to fly out to another country, isolating her, taking away her money, her funds, her way of traveling and getting away from you, and then like forcing her to do sex work or sexually assaulting her habitually. That is overwhelmingly what happens compared to like the movie conception. And so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious if people think this is paranoia. Or if they think it's justified to be, like, a little freaked out and concerned that, like, at any moment, just walking down the street, uh, they might get punched in the face, too. I'm curious. Alrighty. Despite the grim subject matter, what'd you guys think of that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. Nice, nice. I'd probably feel more paranoid if I lived in New York. Thank God you don't live in New York, because who the fuck wants to live in New York? <laughs> who the fuck wants to live in New York? Loverworm, thank you so much for the tier two sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for the $10 reduce. Could be more though. Let me know if I'm wrong and it's actually a three monther. Thank you so much. Didn't say anything, but your support, your support means the world to me. Thank you. All right. Queen Crimson. Xander Hall, what I meant was how do you start looking into his is you have never seen a gun in your life. How do you start looking into getting into guns if you have never seen one in your life? So for starters, you're going to need to um, tell me what state you live in. Uh, obviously, don't specify further than that because I imagine you wouldn't be comfortable doing so and you frankly shouldn't. But knowing what state you're in would help a lot. 
I can still tell you what I can. Michigan. Okay, let me check something. I feel like Michigan might be... Yeah, no, you know, I'm not even going to Google it. Michigan's going to have... My um concealed carry permit applies to Michigan, I think. So I, I think you're probably going to be fine. M Michigan's like super pro-gun. Okay, in that case, in that case. So. The first rule of anything when it comes to guns is safety. All right? Here, very quickly, I can get something for demonstration. <sighs> the first rule for anything involving guns is safety. So like before I handle my gun, I'm gonna take the mag out. And you always take the mag out first before you do this step. And when you do this step, you always point it in a safe direction. Clearing the chamber. There we go. That's the round that came out of the chamber. This is the magazine. And I always just rack the slide a few times for fun because A, it feels good. And B, like if there's a magical second bullet in the chamber, which is literally physically impossible, it would also get ejected. And that's just me being paranoid and overly safe. But when it comes to guns, frankly, I don't believe there's anything, there's no such thing as overly safe. You always keep your finger off the trigger. In the case of my Glock, it rests here. This is where I keep my thumb or my uh, my uh, index finger. I, I kind of rest it actually when, when not shooting a little bit like on top of the lower because there's a little bit of like a bulging out where the lower and the slide meet. And so I kind of rest my finger here and your thumb just kind of goes into this depression. There's like a very convenient spot for your thumb to go. And then your the rest of your hand, you want to get as like up into the meat of your hand as possible. There's always going to be a bit of a gap. You can like move your thumb up if you can, but you want to try to get it up as much as possible. Um, but yeah, like this is the most basic gun you'll ever see. You should start with a Glock handgun, generally is what I recommend, and watch some videos on it. Go on YouTube, step one, go on YouTube and watch some videos. If you've never seen a gun in real life, you do not need to be messing around with a gun in real life, okay? You don't have the, enough knowledge or experience to do so safe, safety. And as I said, safety first, always with guns. There is no time in which it is safe or okay to not be safe with guns. There's no scenario in which the, the rules of firearm safety do not apply. Okay? Make this very clear. I'm going to recommend that you watch a lot of gun videos, particularly ones on gun safety. And once you start to feel confident, not too confident though, because there's Dunning-Kruger. Remember Dunning-Kruger exists, and if you start to feel too confident, that should make you feel less confident. You want to go to your gun range, your local gun range. You can find ones all around any city or town around America that um, offer rentals. So, for example, a gun range that I used to go to in Seattle. Um, I, I'm fine saying now because I'm nowhere near it anymore. But I used to go to a place called Rain City. Uh, Rain City Shooting Range um, in Renton. It was a bit of a drive, but, you know, it's... You know, it's a good shooting range. They have very good deals. Highly recommend them if you're in the area. Um, I bought my magazines there, actually. So this magazine I bought at Rain City uh, Shooting Range. They also have a gun store. Um, I highly recommend uh, that you go to a local shooting range that rents out guns. They will usually have a plan that's like $15, and you will be able to rent a rifle and a handgun of your choosing. And then from there, uh, you have to pay for ammo. That's the only downside, is paying for ammo. That'll cost you a bit. Cheap rounds like this, this is 9mm. These go for like, I'd go, I'd say like 10, 15 cents a round. These ones do at least. That's what I paid for these. I got a really good deal though, so you might get kind of fleeced for like 25 around or something. Um, but yeah, uh, ammo is relatively cheap per round, but. It, it adds up, right? Like, eventually you're going to be shooting, like, a dollar every 10, 15 seconds, right? Like, it's very easy for a magazine of ammo to be a couple dollars worth of ammo in here. And once you shoot it, that's money down the drain, right? So go to the range, and you want to find one with good rental prices. And here's the most important part. You go up to the front desk, and without a hint of shame, without a hint of nervousness and do not even have a second thought, you say to the people at the front desk, 
I have never shot a gun before. I've never even held one. I've done my own, I've done research in order to inform myself and make sure I know as much as I can know, but I was hoping I could have a range officer show me the fundamentals of shooting a firearm before letting me loose on my own because I want to be as safe as possible. When you say this, this will A, indicate the level of non-experience you're at to the range officers, thus making sure they know how serious um, you are about needing like help. They're not going to just think, ah, you just need like help with this gun, and then here you go, I'll let you off onto the range, do what you need. Because some range officers won't fully understand when you say you're a new shooter, how new of a shooter you are and they might underestimate what you mean by that. You need to specify you are a brand new shooter, never even seen a gun in real life before shooter. Like you have to specify these guns in the case I'm right in front of us are the first guns I've ever seen in real life. He needs to teach you how to hold it. He needs to ingrain the rules of firearm safety with you, show you how to load it, clear it, uh, lock open the uh, slides so that you can put a, uh, a, a chamber flag in and show it's safe during ceasefires, all that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, you just you, you have to have a professional teach you, really. That's really all there is to it. Um, go to the range, have a professional teach you, and once you've shot guns, a few, and if you have a friend, by the way, if you have a friend who already shoots guns and owns guns, or a family member, have them take you and teach you. Uh, that is the best case scenario, frankly. If I knew you better, I'd offer to do such a thing. I loaded the, the round that was in the chamber into my mag so I can just easily reload this for... Uh, potential use should, you know, something ever happen while I'm sitting here playing video games in the night. Should I hear, like, a broken window and, like, scampering as someone breaks into my house? I don't have friends joking. I'm sure you are joking about that. I'm gonna put my gun over here on my desk. Anyway, um, yeah. Highly recommend the Glock 19, by the way. Very good gun. Very solid. Uh, very easy to shoot. Very easy to learn. Very easy to take apart, clean, and put back together. Um, I mean, I could take apart the Glock and put it back together within, like, two minutes right now in front of you guys, and that's slow, uh, because it's really not that hard. It, like, Glocks are made to be as easy as possible to field strip. Yay, gun education? Gun education. Wait, the range officer will teach for free? Every time I go, it's like $500 for a class, and it's only the safety stuff, not the mechanics of the gun. Yeah, so here's the thing, Astro or Arguello. Sometimes, like, maybe this is just me. Maybe I've just got, like, Mega Riz, because I'm a content creator, and I, I have the personality for it. Um, like, I switch into my YouTube voice and personality the second I walk into a store and I have to talk to people at the store, like, that kind of thing. Um, but, like, in my experience... I have had range officers offer multiple times for free to teach friends I've taken to the range for the first time, like, the basics of shooting. Like, they'll ask, are you good to teach them? Like, like I can do it. Are you good for it? And I'll be like, no, I'm good to do it. I'll turn it down, because, like, I, I'm there to teach them how to shoot. But they offer. Maybe that's just the range I go to, but I've had it happen at a couple ranges. And sometimes they'll charge you, but if you're, like, if they have a lot of range officers, and there's not a lot of people... They'll help you. They'll they'll oftentimes like if you tell them you've never shot a gun before and you want to shoot, um, they'll they'll gleefully want to teach you how to shoot. It's really a matter of can their inner gun nerd be suppressed by the fact they're on the job and they're not technically supposed to teach you how to shoot for free. Because every gun nerd wants to teach the person who just said, I want to shoot for the first time, can you teach me? Every gun nerd ever wants to say, yes, 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 please, yes! Like, that is the response from every gun nerd. But, like, when they're on the job, it, it, you gotta find out which part of them wins, the gun nerd or the man on the job. For real, so true, indeed. I love the videos where it's like people who are terrified of guns shooting a gun for the first time and it just, the switch flips instantly for them. I binge these videos in my free time. If you're ever wondering, what does Zan watch in his free time? Um... I watch shit like this. Here are people having their entire worldview changed. 
and fears melt away after shooting a gun for the first time. Fire when ready. This might be copyrighted. Oh, same gun as me, Glock 19. Gen 5 too. Same exact gun. Same exact gun. Wow. My name is Monica and I am a nanny and a bartender. I'm Ahmed and I'm a full-time student. No. I've never been around again. I've never heard one go off before in person, so. It's not that loud, but it's also louder than you expect, if it make if that makes sense. Really hard to put into words, but gunshots, like, uh, I mean, it depends on the caliber, but like, 9mm, like, stand, like, if I were to shoot one of these, like, indoors, it would be pretty loud, but outside, you honestly wouldn't need hearing protection, it wouldn't hurt your ears. Like, I, I when, the, the range that I go to is an outdoor range, where, like, you pull up maybe, like, 100 feet from where people are shooting, and I get out of the car, and it's just gunshots ringing off, like, 100 feet away, maybe less, like, I'd say 50 feet away. Um, and even when it's like 7.62, it's not so loud that it hurts my ears, but it is doing hearing damage. Hearing damage happens with noises way below the painful threshold. So you are, you do need hearing protection, but you're not like, like going to hear the gunshot and immediately be like, ah, 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 it's not going to be like that. It's going to be like, whoa, that was fucking loud. What was that? Like, you'll be freaked out. You'll jump, but it won't hurt. You want to use ear protection, though. I use Walker headphones. I have, like, the the top of the line because I value my ears. The Walker razors, I think they're called. They're, like, 60 bucks. Yeah, 53 bucks each. Is that the exact? Yeah, this is the exact one I have. I don't have the... Yeah, this is the exact one. Here we go. Exact color and everything. These. These are uh, are what I have. The Walker's Razor Com BTs. So if you're wondering what these are, if you've ever played Escape from Tarkov, when you get those headphones that make it so all the rain and like gunshots and stuff are quieter, but like footsteps are louder, um, that's what these do. They allow you to, they, you put them on, you flip the switch and, and turn them on, and it plays white noise while also very securely, like, protecting your ears. And it blocks out the sound of gunshots, but it also t has mics on it that pick up the sounds around you and plays them at, like, a normal volume. So you're hearing the gunshots, but you hear them at, like, the sound a movie would play them. And you can... All the while, as you're, like, firing a gun in full auto, you can hear your friend talking right next to you at normal, like, conversation volume because it equalizes all the volumes uh, instantly through the headset. So I just, like, like you don't even have to take off your head. You have no reason to take off your hearing protection. I have a full conversation with my friend, like, unmuffled, undistorted. Um, and, and, like, I have two pairs, I think. Three pairs? I think I bought three pairs. So, um, yeah. I can have up to two friends go to the range with me, and we can just have a conversation while shooting guns, and, uh, like, everyone can be firing, and there's no need to, like, yell or wait between the gunshots to talk. It's so convenient. And they're very effective for hearing protection. My family's not a gun family, so this is my first opportunity. I was born and raised in Saudi Arabia. My parents are from Morocco. In both countries, it's not very, like, re it's, like, pretty hard to get a gun. It's not readily accessible as here. What are your politics on guns? Well, as long as some people have guns, I think everybody should have the right. I think that we should keep guns out of the hands of mentally unstable people. Are you mentally unstable? I'm fairly stable. When I moved here, like, my first initial reaction was, like, being very like anti-gun, but like reading more into it, I just like see that it's like a big part of the culture here. So I just didn't want to just keep talking about me being anti-gun without like ever trying to shoot a gun, so. I've actually thought about- I respect the fuck out of that. If you've shot a gun before and you're anti-gun, I have infinitely more respect for you than the average anti-gun person. Most anti-gun people have never shot a gun. And that, that is telling. Becoming a concealed carry permit holder because I kind of go some into some weird neighborhoods for work And so I thought this would be an awesome kind of that's the wrong mindset the thing about concealed carrying 
And the fundamental thing they teach you, I'm, I'm licensed in two, like, I have two different licenses that cover me in, like, 40 states at this point. I, I have the I have the right to conceal carry in, like, every state where they allow you to conceal carry, pretty much. Um, and what they hammer home in the, what about school shootings? Like, there are many ways that we can implement policy to prevent school shootings and other forms of mass shooting and mass killing without restricting gun owning for like legal citizens the problem with like the reason school shootings happen the vast majority of the time are three primary reasons a the majority of mass shootings happen with handguns okay you're thinking like of an ar-15 some sort of like uh tactical uh like large magazine automatic rifle or maybe a full auto like semi-automatic rifle um that just like brrr, or boo -boo 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 -boo, just mowing people down right the majority of gun crime in this country and even mass shootings in this country happen with handguns the same exact gun as this auto loading handguns not this exact type of auto loading handgun not necessarily glock 19s but handguns not rifles the fact is that florida and pro-gun states have actually already reduced the amount of gun crime used with handguns already florida of all places that was ron DeSantis who passed this bill because even the pro-gun states at the very least have a uh, like a real understanding of like actual gun crime they they don't fear monger about guns when they respond to crime they respond to gun crime like effectively based on like the data and 20 people under 21 years old legally buying handguns was a problem and so they banned it. DeSantis, I believe, was the one who who passed the bill that that implemented the ban for anyone below 21 years old buying a handgun. To be fair, you could still buy a rifle at 18. So the first thing we can do is increase the required age to own a rifle to 21 as well. If you can't drink, I don't think you should be able to wield a gun legally uh, outside of adult supervision under certain circumstances. I think the rules around guns should be very much the same as alcohol. Not to mention, there should be much heavier burden on gun owners to keep their guns safe. Now, I don't keep my gun in a safe because if I leave the house, the gun is on me. And if the gun's not on me, I'm at home. So it doesn't need to be in a safe because I'm guarding it, right? Um, but if I'm not present to guard my gun, then I want to make sure it's locked up. So I lock it up in that, which is a pretty solid way to lock it up, but... You know, it's my budget solution at the moment. But if you have kids, you have to have a safe. I, I I would advocate for safe storage laws that require you to have a safe. And legal ramifications for people found keeping their guns unsecured in their cars, which, trust me, if you know a gun guy who's, like, really into guns and owns a lot of guns, ask him how many guns he has in his car, and if he answers honestly, he'll say, I don't know. It's true as fuck. Of course, if we actually dedicated more funds to uh, broadly available mental health care or just health care in general, we would see a massive decrease. We have many social problems that have caused the gun crime that has be been so uh, rampant in America. The reason why gun crime happens here is because crime happens here and we have guns. We can't take away the guns from the criminals. There's too many out there. They, the guns outnumber the people. The best way to handle this problem is to handle crime. And as lefties, you should all know how we handle crime. It's a systemic, sociological problem, not one that's to be solved with Gestapo-style uh, overreach and, like, broken windows policing. There are sociological reasons why crime happens... And the cr gun crime isn't, like, different in some special way in the reason it's happening. If we tackle crime for the same reason, gun crime, the same reasons we, the way we tackle any other crime, we will see it drop substantially. And there are many restrictions that we can absolutely afford to put in place that will restrict the accessibility of guns to potential ne'er-do-wells. However, um, however, I do not agree with the idea of outright banning any type of gun. I don't like the fact that in the state of Washington, where I live, I have to use a, a 10 round magazine, which is what this is, a 10 round mag, because a 15 round mag, like you can see here, it's got like the 10 holes instead of 15, like it should. The reason for that is because 
here in uh, Washington, you're not allowed to have a magazine with more than 10 rounds for anything that is an actual firearm, uh, which really sucks. But what can you do? I don't like restrictions like that. I don't like laws that ban any type of gun. I think that there should be a way, if you are a legal, non-crime committing citizen, no matter how many hoops you have to jump through to prove that you are a safe, responsible person, you should eventually be able to get some kind of license, some kind of permit, to be able to own any type of gun or firearm. Because in America, we've got big tracts of land where people have their big old ranch, and there are dudes like FPS Russia who want to be able to make their YouTube videos blowing shit up in the middle of, the, of nowhere with their guns that they're never going to use to hurt anybody. So, like, we shouldn't punish the tens of millions, or is it hundreds of millions, of legal gun owners in America and make them hate the Democrats forever and never not vote Republican again by banning guns. Trust me. Guns are the most effective wedge issue Republicans have in this country. Possibly the most effective wedge issue. More than any other issue, I think more Americans might vote Republican rather than Democrat as, as for, with guns being their wedge issue than any other issue. I think guns might be the abortion of the right. Like, the left has abortion, which is, like, the thing that the left is super in favor of, the right is against, while the right has guns, which is the thing that everybody is super in favor of in America that the left is super against. So it's like, much in the same way that Republicans being against abortion is shooting themselves in the foot, uh, poetically enough, Democrats do the same thing by being super anti-gun. Of a start. Are you ready? Kind of. That's the Phantom camera that's in front of you. You're shooting your first time shooting a gun in slow motion. Cool. All right, let's go for it. All right, so we're going to get our foamies in. Yeah. And our eye protection on. Let you load that guy. Oh, cool. So I get to load my own magazine. Okay, so. Press down, then slide it underneath. Perfect. Okay. Oh, not yet. Not oh. yet. Let's go ahead and place the magazine. Let me show you how much of a pain. Well, so for them, it's not as much of a pain in the ass. Do I have a spare magazine? Oh, I don't want to unload my. Okay, hold on. I guess I'm going to be loading magazines or loading a magazine for the rest of the segment. Ah, God, that cuts your fingers. Okay. Here's the rounds. Look, bullets. Woo! They're actually called rounds. The projectile, the little, the little brown part you see here, the copper jacketed bit, is actually uh, that's the bullet, not the sil not the like brassy bit you see there. Um, anyway, to get an idea of what they're doing here, it's actually really funny. Um, it's a massive pain in the ass, and it gets like twice as hard to load each successive round in. But you can see here, this is an empty magazine. There's this little platform that the rounds lay on top of. It comes up a little bit. I can push it down like a little switch. You see that? And it goes quite down. Like I can really push my finger in there, but it, it, it gets resistance the further down I push because there's a spring in there. And what you have to do is to load a round, and it gets harder each time you put a round in. The first one's the easiest. You have to like rest the round on this little curved platform. I'm trying to get a good angle. Rest the round on this little curved platform, and then you push down, and it just kind of slides and locks in if you get it just in enough. At this point, you don't need to keep pushing. You can relax for a second. You're good. And from there, you just push it into place. It gets twice as hard for each round you put into the magazine. So for, you, for demonstration here, I'll put round number two in. Pretty easy. This one's going to be twice as hard as that one. Still pretty easy. This one will be twice as hard as that one. Still pretty easy. And so on and so forth. But, like, it's harder than it looks. Down. Let's get a good stance first, okay? okay? A little bit wider with your stance. Oh, oh. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Right. All right. Right hand grip. Go ahead and pick up the gun. Finger off the trigger. Muzzle pointed directly down range. Get that finger all the way up on the frame here, okay? Like that. Insert magazine. Go ahead and put it in there. I hope someone in the video you hear turns that click, and you know points you're good. at it's someone into place. Now, for like half squeeze, a second, pull back, let go. freaks out. Let go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. There you go. All right, nice firm grip with the left. Go ahead and align your sights to the target. You know what? I appreciate that he's like so nervous and wants to make so sure that he's not doing anything wrong that he stands there like 
gripping that slide that so badly wants him to let it go, by the way. Like, you have to have a certain kind of strength to hold that slide pulled back, like, when it's not locked back. And, and like, he was holding onto that thing for dear life, fingers getting sweaty, like, are you sure? Are you sure I can let it go? Are you sure I can let it go? It's not going to go off? It's not going to go off and, and shoot anything? Okay, okay. Forward leaning, aggressive stance. Slow, steady squeeze. Fire when ready. Ah, there we go. Nice. Ah, uh, he blinked. Oh, SD didn't flinch. Nope, that's fine. That's honestly fine. If you flinch after the, the gunshot, all good. You can flinch after the gunshot. If you flinch before, that's a habit you gotta break. Who flinches before the shot? She flint. She doesn't flinch at all. Okay, she does. But, like, she doesn't, like, for a second flinch before the, the pulling the trigger. Like, she... She really just had her eyes open. <laughs> Immediate flinch. This guy was on it. She's on it too. Uh. Oh no no no. Oh. That's a, that's a situation. That's a situation right there. That's not a good situation. Um, you keep your hands on the gun until, like, you're done firing, until your finger's off the trigger. Because a dangerous thing that could have happened here is his finger's still on the trigger. They only put one round in the chamber for each person because they're shooting their first round and people make mistakes and you don't want them to have a loaded gun afterwards and they, like, turn around all excited and point at everybody. Um, so, uh... If he accidentally pulled the trigger twice, like bump fired it on accident, for example, he could have had a quick like bang bang go off. And if his hand, if he like dropped the gun down instinctively and his hand was in the way, I've seen it happen where people shoot straight through their hand because their reaction is like uncontrolled. They can't control themselves when they hear the pop. And uh, it's unusual. It's unusual. If you're like properly prepped, you'll anybody can stay still and have perfectly fine control of themselves when the round goes off. Imagine shooting a 1911. This guy's shooting a Glock right now. Um, but yeah, if he shot a 1911, he would probably flinch a lot more. That's 45. They okay. This guy. Kept his finger on the trigger. You can see this guy going in to immediately take the gun away from him. Because even though he's not turning the gun towards the people that he's looking at. This guy is very concerned he will with his finger on the trigger. Which even with no round in the chamber and the slide locked back because it's empty. That's a massive no-no and you don't even let that happen if it's going to. Finger off the trigger. Finger off the trigger. Finger off the trigger. Finger off, Finger the, off trigger. the trigger. Finger off the trigger. Finger off the trigger. Oh. Finger off the trigger. Oh. All right, no, no, hold on to oh, it, though. Just get your finger off the trigger. Good job. Wow. Now, right thumb to... I don't like that. I don't like how his finger instinctively went for the trigger guard there. Your trigger guard is not where your finger goes at all. Your finger should be nowhere near the trigger guard unless you're about to fire. So that's why it bothers me that his finger almost instinctively went to, like slide into that trigger guard. Oh, just get your finger off the trigger. See that? He had to he had to push his finger away from the trigger guard because that's where it instinctively went. Trigger. Good job. Wow. Now right thumb Thank to you. magazine release, left hand to magazine. She oh, is good. good at this. Oh, oh no 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 no. no. Now, Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. She totally put that index finger in the trigger guard there at the very least. The magazine. There oh, you go. Oh, You're good. Uh, it's empty, but did you see that finger twitch? That wasn't good. Ready to catch it? There you go. Boom. Now magazine down. Bullseye. Great shot. For those who don't know what she was doing there, she was trying to eject the uh, magazine, the empty magazine. So what you want to do... God, you got me so stunlocked on guns, guys. How, how could you do this to me? What you want to do is make it like a habit. Like for me, I literally could not imagine a scenario in which my finger, my index finger, does not instinctively rest here. 
This is just where my index finger goes when I'm casually holding my gun. When I'm about to shoot it, my index finger goes here. This is just where it goes. I don't care what's going on. This is where it goes. And what she was trying to do was on the opposite side of the gun. I'm now going to turn it over. On the opposite side of the gun is this. This right here is a button that you can press. And this button right here, see this little button, releases a little mechanism that is holding the magazine in place in here, the magwell. And if the mag if the gun is, you know, facing right side up, gravity will just let the magazine drop straight out and you can catch it or let it fall on the ground, whatever you please. And there you go. Is your cam inverted or are you a southpaw? My cam is inverted. I'm a right-handed uh, shooter and right-handed everything. This is my right hand right now. Now, the way you want to hold it, Glocks are a little special, is you kind of have to, you kind of have to like, do a little bit of a, uh, yeah, get it in there a little bit because you really got to bury that beaver tail in your hand. And so I always just grab, get a little bit of a, get a little bit of a, a press, you know, get it, get it pressed on there a little bit. And uh, once you've got it nice and buried in the beaver tail, like the beaver tail, that's what this is called right here. Once you've got that buried in the like space between your thumb and finger, um, that's where you want it to be. Your thumb should always be resting like pretty much if you see what's happening here you can see like what kind of grip i have right like the the index finger and the thumb have been trained to like pinch the gun i am mostly holding the gun with my index finger and thumb right now while just kind of wedging it between my fingers here and my palm here there's not much of a i'm not squeezing the grip like this is the difference between me squeezing the grip, this is me squeezing it, and now I'm shaking, because, and I wouldn't be a good shooter if I was doing this, and my normal grip. You pretty loosely hold the actual grip itself. The actual holding, gripping of the gun is happening with these muscles. These are the muscles you're actually holding the gun with. And this is actually where the gun's being controlled, because you don't want the gun to fly out of your hand, and when it fires, you want to be able to just be like, well, obviously this isn't how you would hold it. You would hold it like this, but when it fires, you just want it to be so that the actual sort of like, what's it called? The, um, uh, the axis of the like pie slice shape that is a like muzzle climb motion. You want the axis of it, the point to be here. You want to make sure you're not letting the gun go to the side when it recoils go or go down when it recoils. You want to make sure it pitches straight upwards and with as little pitch as possible, and you want the pitch to be here. What's behind the wall you're pointing at? Uh, several feet of dirt. Actually, possibly hundreds of feet of dirt. I live, I'm currently in a basement. You remember that, right? Like, I'm currently in a basement. That's where my streaming room is. If my gun went off, I would hit my wall, which is backed by, like, it, which is multiple feet underground. So it would have to go through rocks, dirt, roots, and whatnot for, like, hundreds of feet, a 9 millimeter round. So if a round did go off right now, the worst casualty would be my monitor. <laughs> also, it's empty. Uh, but yes, regardless. Regardless. Oh, I didn't turn on my lights, I just realized. What the hell? There we go. Regardless. Um... I do feel uh, that that was the best gun education segment I could do on the fly. Dude, bullseye. It's okay. You missed the paper. No worries. Just go slower with the trigger, okay? Oh, a little bit slower? slower? Yep. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Do you want to shoot more? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So what? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Every time. The thing that you did, right? As soon as you shot, you let go with your left hand. Yeah. All right, just keep that left yep. hand on there. You're going to load up nine rounds, all right? How was it? Every criticism I pointed out, the range officer either said off camera or will proceed to say on camera. God, this is boring. Be back in an hour. Dope. Enjoy the band, buddy. <laughs> you can leave and, like, come back later or not come back at all if you're just bored. But, like, wh why complain in chat? Someone asked a question. I'm being nice and informing them on guns as they asked. It's pretty scary. What? I'm all, like, shaky. Let it go. Perfect. All right, left hand grip. You got nine shots. Okay. okay. Remember to breathe in slow, steady trigger now they squeezes. Got a full mag. Fire when ready. Almost full mag. Oh, 
Oh, come on, Freestyle. man. You, you got to you gotta keep that hand. You, you know the best way? So what you got to know is, is like the, what you're essentially doing is with one hand, with one arm, you're, you're like, it depends on how you're gripping the gun. But imagine you're doing this. You're punching forward with your right hand and pulling back on your fist with your left hand. And you're not doing this like really hard. You're doing it in like a firm locked in way that isn't shaky or vibrating, you know? Like, you know how you can strain a muscle or, or flex a muscle or push hard on something and you start shaking? You need to make sure you do not shake whatever you do. So you're just getting a nice firm push-pull. One hand pushes or one arm pushes, one arm pulls. That is the best, best way I can illustrate how you are meant to grip the gun. Not hold the gun, because that's these fingers here. These, that's all this that's gripping the gun, this part. These, this part of your hand does the gripping. I agree, like Xander Hall gun, I agree we like Xander Hall gun locks. I hope you guys do, because I'm going to be doing a lot more gun content in the future. Just got home, did I miss Trans Jesus? No, you haven't. Trans Jesus is ahead. Left hand grip, right thumb on top of left. Oh, oh, is he gonna react? Oh, I wanted to see in slow motion how he reacts to a hot shell. Sometimes, especially if you're a woman, if you're a woman, wear a turtleneck to the range. They usually cool, like if it's an indoor range, it'll be nice and cool inside. You can see this guy's wearing a sweater. Wear something that does not let anything get into your bra. If you've got like big, beautiful cleavage, you are going, that cleavage is gonna become a coin slot for piping hot shells. Okay, you gotta you gotta fucking lock those babies up and make sure nothing can get in. Dress like you would going out into the swamp where there's gonna be mosquitoes. Okay, because the worst thing ever is around getting in your shirt. If you're a guy, it just falls straight through your shirt and you're fine. You feel like a hot streak down your back, and it's not even that bad. But when you're a woman, women have curves typically, and uh, they get caught on those curves th these rounds. So be careful. Oh, That's keep amazing. your muzzle pointed directly downrange. Directly okay. downrange. Oh. I love their reactions. All right, finger off. I love that not a single one of them said, no, I don't want to shoot again, I'm too scared. Because the reality is that guns have a louder bark than they do a bite. Shooting a gun is always more pleasant than being in the vicinity of someone shooting a gun. So, like, you'll go to the range, and, like, the most doubt you'll feel is when you have the sensation of the other people shooting guns around you. It's gonna, it's gonna scare you a little bit, because the way guns work, the shockwave and the acoustics are hitting everything but the shooter, right? They're made to make the experience as comfortable for the shooter as possible. So when you're shooting the gun, do not be afraid that it's gonna be like way worse than it is when around someone shooting the gun. It's actually gonna be way more pleasant than it is when you're in the room with people shooting the guns. Are you allowed to mag dump at the range? Almost certainly no. Almost certainly no. Um, the majority of ranges will not allow you to just, like, rap. they'll say no rapid fire. Uh, some are cool, though. It depends. Like, for example, um, the Creatures, famously. Vegas range. I'm actually going to Texas in a month for a trip with friends, and I'm going to shoot automatic rifles for the very first time. I've never shot anything automatic in my entire life. Um, and uh, I'm going to go to a range in Texas, not too unlike... What you see here, the creatures way back in the day on their Road D3 went to a range in Vegas like this. This is one of my favorite channels from back in the day. <laughs> I'm gonna try the spray pattern. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'll stop you, Vegas. What'd you stop. get? Stop, what are you doing? I got the MP5 and uh, the G17 suppressed, which is actually the gun of the week. So it was a gun, gun of the week. Gun of the week. James? I got the zombie experience. 
He's got an M16, a pistol, a uh, shotgun. It was the governor. A, oh, did he get stump? He got a stump, stump yeah, pistol, was, so he yeah. has a revolver. And then, oh, man. That's going to be good. Safety, what'd you get? They're not buying guns. Oh, they're no, renting them. No. It's like 200 bucks, and you get to shoot, like, 15 different fully automatic rifles. Um, and it covers, like, two mags of ammo per gun. I checked this place's uh, uh, rentals on their website. Anything. What'd you get, Joe? I think I got the Tommy gun. We got you the Tommy gun. Because I'm Italian. <laughs> get it? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> this is going to be insane. Yeah, Nazi zombie. This is a Nazi zombie. Nazi zombie. What did you... <laughs> you can shoot a Nazi zombie at this range, guys. Listen, this is true America. Shooting Nazi zombies and Nazi Osama bin Laden... Uh, with fully automatic rifles at the range in Las Vegas and then going and legally doing prostitution. I think that's allowed in, in Vegas. What a based state. Or It's basically a state. It's like a little mini state. Osama zombie? Yeah. I'm afraid right now. It's afraid about what I might do. Okay, that's 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 semi-auto. We want to see the auto, the auto shit. These Glocks out of here. Get these fucking revolvers out of here. Yeah, the AK. This is I first thing I'm shooting when I get to Texas. AK-47. I'm shooting an AK first thing I do when I get to Texas. Damn. Damn. Getting there and holy smashing through there. Oh, I'm gonna find the nearest two A bumper sticker having guy and say, "Listen, I just landed in Texas. I've never shot a fully automatic gun before. I I really wanna. I can can I can, do you have a range or like property? Can I shoot yours? You could just witness the my my automatic cherry get popped in real time. Okay, and he'll be like." Well, hell yeah, brother. Hop in the back of my truck. Just, just keep your head low so the cops don't see you're sitting back there without a seatbelt. I'll take it back to my land and we, I'll let you shoot my AK. I'll let you shoot my, my uh, M4. I'll just shoot whatever you want, buddy. Something right there. No, that's, yeah. the, that's the entry Tower point. Gotta find right some good old boys. Here it goes. He said he was going to try to control the spray pattern. So he probably had loose shoulders and, like, was trying to move the gun down to challenge the recoil when that is not how you shoot anything. You plant it deep in the meat here and you try to hold it steady. And if anything is getting, like, if anything is supposed to, like, look down in response to muzzle climb, it should be your entire upper body, like, leaning forward more to, like challenge the the muzzle wanting to climb up otherwise you're going to lose control of the gun your whole body has to control the gun you can't just use your arm if you're shooting something like this especially your whole body has to control the gun less so if you're shooting like a nine millimeter handgun much more the case when shooting what a 762 i think uh ak's shoot if my tarkov knowledge is right <laughs> full auto <laughs> He's trying to fight the muzzle climb like it's CS. He's a CS player. I'm so ready. I'm so ready to shoot an AK, man. I'm so ready. All right, gun stun lock is over. James' honest reaction, so real. Uberhex or Nova was my first YouTuber I ever watched. Like, legitimately, who I became a fan of and habitually watched and, like, uh, w was, like, sub to. It was his infamous two playthrough. That's what got me. Back in the golden days of 2011. Oh. God, I miss old Minecraft YouTube. The West has fallen. T. Lossalot, thank you so much for the tier 1 sub, or tier 2 sub. I really appreciate that. Let me know if that's a multiple month sub, and, you know, I'll credit you as such. But for now, thank you so much for the $10. I really appreciate that. Said, uh, purple is the best color. True. True. You guys do love your purple names. You guys do love your purple names. 
Yeah, he loves his cars. He loves his cars. Let me update the dono goal really quick. Nice, nice. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. Hey guys, you know how there's supposed to be this thing called separation of church and state, notably when it comes to our state-run public schools? Like, you guys know that, right? Like, there's supposed to be this, like, thing where religion is not, like, pushed on or, like, not necessarily enabled, but, like, encouraged in school. It shouldn't be demonized, it shouldn't be disallowed, but it shouldn't be in any way there as a form of or as a mechanism to get kids into religion, especially in schools. That's what private Catholic schools are for, exactly. However, in red states, where the entirety of their ruling body believe that America is a Christian country and Christian values and beliefs should be taught to every kid uh, that there is, and they shouldn't have a, cho like a choice in the matter, because um, they don't believe there is a choice in the matter, uh, those states are doing everything in their power to dissolve the separation of church and state, notably in promoting and allowing private nonprofits to do some really weird stuff. Take a listen to this uh, article. Prayer, Bible lessons, and a big red bus. How an Ohio group is bringing God to public school. Ohio Riz, Skibbity Toilet. It was, you know, mandatory. After a morning lesson on multiplying fractions, about half of the students in a fifth grade class at Etna Road Elementary School, public school by the way, packed up their work and headed to the campus library. The other half, all wearing matching red t-shirts, put on their coats, lined up single file, and boarded a red bus with the words LifeWise Academy painted on the side. While their classmates back at school borrowed shelves of books, Browse shelves of book shelves of books, the children on the bus sang praise to Jesus. Quote, there is no other name by which we must be saved. The students soon arrived at a church half a mile away, where for the next 30 minutes they would pray, read the Bible, and sing worship songs. I, I like how it's half a mile away and they don't even use this as an opportunity for the kids to like walk. Do you know how much as a kid I would have preferred for that to be a half mile walk there and back from the school where we all get to walk like with our friends on the sidewalk with like chaperones? We did that. Like it's not too dangerous. We did that in Tampa where like we had to get walked from the school to a daycare like aftercare thing that we had like when I was in elementary school and um, they had a teacher in front and a teacher in back and they would walk us all the way down this quiet like uh, sort of residential street that the school was on up to the big main six lane road where we'd have to hit that button and wait for like three to five minutes for the green walks or the white walk sign and then we'd have to like haul ass across this six I think it might have been eight lane massive main road through Tampa um, and then like get across the street then walk a, like along that street for like another quarter mile which is where we would get to the corner the massive intersection corner where the daycare was like that's something we did in school like if we were in that daycare uh, with that particular location so I don't see why they couldn't have turned it into a walking thing because we loved that walk as kids like that was my that was one of the things I looked forward to the most because it was like school time and also uh, we get to talk to our friends for, like, a good amount of time. Like, that's the way I looked at, at it as a kid. But, of course, car-dependent culture, get in the bus. The the the, the literal half-mile uh, trip will be completed in two minutes at, the, at most in this vehicle. And uh, you will quickly be getting to the prayer. No talking aloud, only prayer. 
The students soon arrived at a church a half mile away where for the next 30 minutes they would pray, read the Bible, and sing worship songs, activities that have become a routine part of their week thanks to an Ohio-based nonprofit on a mission to put God back in the public school day. What a, what a horrible statement, on a mission to put God back in the public school day. LifeWise Academy is permitted under a pair of well, little-known decades-old U.S. Supreme Court rulings that allow for off-campus religious instruction during school hours. When LifeWise launched in 2018, the initial goal was to serve 25 schools by 2025, but it surpassed that long ago. By the start of this year, LifeWise has set up chapters in more than 300 schools in a dozen states, teaching 35,000 public school students weekly Bible lessons that are usually scheduled to coincide with lunch or non-core courses such as library, art or gym class of course they're taking away the gym like the exercise part of the day for these kids and it's the parents that are going to make them go um none of these kids like there are no kids that are like oh they're doing a bible study i want to go to bible study none of these kids are choosing to go to the bible study unless it's like really more entertaining than whatever they're doing at school during that period LifeWise has won support from conservatives on the front lines of the new culture wars over LGBTQ inclusion, sexually explicit library books, and the role of racism in American history. But it also has a growing foothold in some progressive suburbs and cities, including deep blue Columbus, Ohio. Its explosive growth has been celebrated by Christian groups and parents who've long decried the removal of religion from America's classrooms, and denounced by those who believe there should be a hard line between religion and public education. Supporters say LifeWise, which teaches children ch character development through Bible lessons, complies with the separation of church and state. Public schools are not allowed to directly promote or fund the program, which is offered free to students whose parents sign permission slips. Quote, a lot of parents want to be able to say to their child, yeah, you're going to get science class, you're going to get math class, you're going to get English class, and you're going to have Bible class too, as if, as if the Bible is as valid as those peer-reviewed real things like math, science, and the English language. Because this is important to us as a family, said LifeWise founder and former Ohio State Buc Bucky's defensive lineman Joel Penton. But parents and activists who've mobilized against LifeWise say that pushing, busing students to nearby churches, where they sometimes collect prizes and eat candy, has made some non-Christian children feel left out or pressured to attend. Quote, whether it's happening on campus or not, this program is bringing religion into the school, said De Demry Alonzo, an English tutor who works at several schools with LifeWise programs in Central Ohio. Quote, it's not fair to the kids of different religions. At a time when conservatives nationally are fighting what they portray as liberal indoctrination in schools, some parents and critics see the, the opposite playing out. Some parents and critics see the opposite playing out. Ah yes, it's almost like the right literally accuses the left of doing the opposite of what they're doing at any given time. Ah, are, are they making a massive push to like indoctrinate kids in schools? It's time to go harder than ever accusing the left of doing that to divert attention from what they're doing. Opponents have also do documented several instances of teachers and administrators promising LifeWise to students, either by allowing LifeWise volunteers to visit classrooms, hosting school-wide assemblies, or advertising the program and paperwork sent home to parents. Action that, according to some legal experts, could violate the First Amendment. Penton said LifeWise follows all laws and local policies and avoids hot-button partisan topics in its curriculum which is designed to guide students through the entire Bible in five years. He said LifeWise receives very broad support from p groups with a range of political views. Last summer, LifeWise's National Teacher Summit was sponsored by Patriot Mobile, a far-right Christian cell phone company that has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars supporting school board candidates pr promising to fight LGBTQ acceptance in schools. Dude, where are these like weird corporations that are on the left? I guess the most the right can say is Sweet Baby Inc. The difference is, left-wing grifters seem to want to, like, rip off and grift from big corporations and companies, if anything. 
Meanwhile, right-wing grifters want to grift off of their, like, grassroots fan base and audience until they're able to get, like, actual large-scale corporate funding. I wonder if there's a, um... Here. God, they've got their own YouTube channel. They don't get a lot of views. And their videos aren't super interesting. God. They, NBC put out a thing called Christian Nationalism on the Rise. Could this be what they were responding to? That Michael Perutka, the Republican nominee for Maryland Attorney General, he's, it's a position he's taken since at least 2014 when he called the separation of church and state, quote, the great lie. And he added, there can be no separation of God from government because he, capital H there, created it. Yeah, so something you guys have to understand fundamentally is that Christians cannot allow separation of church and state to stand. Um, it's one of those issues where, like, Republicans just openly cannot, and Christians in general, cannot allow there to be separation of church and state. And they fundamentally, openly, as part of their religion, cannot allow there to be a choice, freedom, to believe what you want to believe. Um, because the fact is, they believe, they know, or say they know, God is real, and there can be no choice or separation of church, of church from God, because he is re he's real, there's no question of it, he made everything, and you he must be your Lord, you must worship him. If you choose not to, you are evil, you are of the devil, you are the enemy of humanity and of all that is good, and you're not to be taken seriously, you're not like an enemy or an opponent to be dealt with. Uh, in like a fair political fight, um, they literally think they're fighting for the supreme being that created everything and that their eternal soul is on the line if they do not like make God's will known and forced upon everybody. Like even if you're friends with a Christian and they're not like super weird about it, they do secretly believe you'll burn in hell forever if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior before you die. Uh, most importantly, Lord. Like, you have to you have to worship him, like, in the most literal of ways. Like, like one would worship a king, but even more so, a, a, a holy king. Yeah, they're, they're fucking nutjobs. They're actually fucking nutjobs. Do they have a segment on, uh... Lifewire? What are they called? This is not about biology. It's about intelligence. It's about dignity. It's about who you... Apparently not. I wonder what they were responding to when they said that NBC mischaracterized them, because I have yet to find NBC talk about them specifically at all. I don't know, maybe that's just them calling out NBC for being pro-separation of church and state. Really hard to say. I don't know. You have to understand, though, um, as much as I don't want to be the fedora-tipping atheist, the fedora-tipping Reddit atheists had a point, okay? Religion is just outright destructive to our society, and once religious people, and they often get to this point that I'm about to, you know, set as the line, once they get to the point where they cannot stand that other people do not believe what they do anymore, they're a danger to society as a whole. Maybe not a huge danger, but in some way, shape, or form, they are a danger to society. A secular society is what everyone should strive for, because in a secular society, people can believe whatever they please religiously. There is no persecution, there is no religious 
state of power that decides what religions are okay and what aren't or what is the standard religion. Everybody is equally free to worship what they want to worship, signify worship for what they want to worship. There is no set standard default religion, which America does not have a set standard default religion. Fundamentally, that is why the separation of church and state exists. But Christian conservatives and Christian nationalists are desperate to push the idea that um, the like separation of church and state doesn't exist. That it's made up, and that the four like the founding fathers were Christians, and that they believe that this is a white Christian country. Have you, have you guys ever heard of the Quiverfuls? This kind of reminds me of that. Really? Not a single, like, verified news station has talked about this topic? This is a channel called Quiverful Documentary. Alright, maybe the opening of this documentary explains what the Quiverfuls are all about. I wonder if it's pro or against the movement slash cult. It is a sect of Christianity popular in America Psalm and Canada. Psalm 127, a song of degrees for Solomon. I think pro. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Spoilers, the arrows are sperm. You got it, Heavy Gretel. To be fair, my, my sperm is also somewhat arrow-like in its velocity and trajectory. Oftentimes. Except That's what doing the Lord keeps does. the city. You gotta do kegels, Chad. If you're not doing them kegels, you're not you're not gonna have, like, uh, World War I artillery cannon loads that can, like, arc across the sky and knock a window out of the frame. Uh, I had to introduce some ungodly content to this, uh, to this segment. Okay, I'll explain the Quiverfuls to you guys, because this isn't gonna get to it. This seems to be a pro-Quiverful documentary allowed on YouTube for some reason for the last five years. They don't care. Oh, YouTube sucks. Okay. That aside, um, the idea is that every man has a responsibility to find a wife, maybe more than one wife, and impregnate her as much and as frequently as possible so that she will have as many kids as possible. Ideally, sons. Ideally, a lot of sons. It's a breeding kink thing. And then those sons are to be trained like soldiers because they are soldiers for God. They are arrows in God's quiver. And so you must have a quiver full of children who are all to be warriors for God. And a lot of these people, they make, um, they make, like, militia groups and whatnot. Christian. Ah, uh, Vice copyrights the shit out of you. What about Frontline PBS? Like, you gotta understand, the most radical of these people are doing shit like this. Tonight, from Charlottesville to Pittsburgh, into this synagogue and said, I just want to kill Jews. An ongoing investigation. He's identifying Jews as a threat to our people. What he means there is white people. Of no, Adam off and neo Nazis. What do you think was going on in this house? They were making bombs. 
for the specific engine plants. Power lines, nuclear reactors, synagogues. They want to go forth and right. Through interviews with insiders. These are like the big deal Nazi terror groups that are trying to plan the day of the rope. Like the day that they like knock out all the power plants, power stations, the lights go out and in the darkness they roll into the cities fully armed in great numbers and start wiping out all the minorities, the gays, the people who dared to support them. That These are the people who want to do that, that they are getting like the scoop on here. Yes, Frontline and ProPublica reporter A.C. Thompson uncover the movement's methods. They are actively recruiting military members. Does that surprise you? And expose their hate. Make America great again. In order to make America great again, you'd have to make America white again. So, the fact is, if they're going to do this, they can't be a bunch of geriatric fucks leading a militia where they bring about the day of the rope. They need young blood. They need young blood. And for a generation that is just more progressive than ever, and a following generation with Gen Alpha that is just going to be even more progressive by all metrics, the Republicans are scared. American Christian nationalists are scared. They want to dissolve the separation of church and state because they need to push religion on these kids young, as young as possible, so they'll be susceptible to conservative ideology, and they can do something something to prolong the lifespan of the Republican establishment in America. They're desperate to do so, and their main tool to try to achieve this is going to be religion. I know it was a bit of a shorter segment, but how do you guys like it? I feel like it came out pretty good. Thoughts, chat? Good seg? Hell yeah. All right, one segment left. It's time to talk about transgender Jesus. Getting the links ready for the next segment, and then we're going to read Donos too, of course. Mm. Okay, this is the funniest GIF in the world. I saw this on Twitter today, I have to show you this GIF, it's the funniest thing in the world. so fucking stupid. It's so fucking dumb. Uh. Alrighty then. One sec, chat. Yeah, that's the segment. That was the segment, guys. It's over. No. Um. Happy Trans Day, everybody. Wow. It's Trans Day! Slashy, thank you so much for the $5 donation. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate the $5. It helps a lot, and it means a lot. Said, an addendum, my biggest fear that I think is actually a real threat is that they may start to push technological progress back. Look at Michael Knowles, who pretty much criticizes Industrial Revolution. I want to discuss the possibility these Christian nationalists eventually are trying to stop the teaching of science altogether. I have some pretty... I have some funny tweets that show how little they value scientists. I made this case many times before. Um, you could send them to me on uh, Discord DMs, but honestly, you would kind of be ba we'd be beating a dead horse. I talk about this frequently and will continue to do so. Um, the right considers science and learning fundamentally education, especially higher education, the enemy. And they aren't like quiet about it either. But thank you so much for the two $5 donations. It really does mean a lot. Thank you, thank you. Of course, if you guys want to support me for completely free, you can always do so by, by just dropping a like on uh, any of my videos or streams. It really does help a lot, and I mean it. 
Um, and of course, if you want to support me, you know, a little extra, go a little further, you can always donate, subscribe, or gift a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or support me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. All right. <clears throat> Okay. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. Happy Trans Day of Visibility, everybody. And also, very much less importantly, Happy Easter. That's right. This year, Trans Day of Visibility, the last day of March every year, has fallen on Easter Sunday. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you how the right has responded to this. Now, under normal circumstances, the right would just be having, like, maybe a little bit of a meltdown. But it goes even further than that. Because Biden has declared that today, the last day of March, will be the... Wow. Day of Transgender Visibility, or Transgender Day of Visibility. I'm calling it the Day of Transgender Visibility, though. That, that feels much more, it rolls off the tongue for me a lot better, in my opinion. And not only that, but Biden has outright backed in a very loud way, much louder than he really has before, though he has very much backed trans people, um, backed, tra backed up trans rights. This is a loud trans rights from Biden. Um, we're also coming out of... Um, or, or we're also uh, in the early days of a ceasefire in Gaza, for those that don't know, that was headed by Biden and the U.S. So despite that, we're still seeing the right protesting, or not the right, the left protesting Biden, because no matter what Biden or the Democrats do, the bar will never, ever be reached. Welcome back to Politics Nation. Let's bring in tonight's political panel. I like this Former guy. Republican Congressman Dave Jolly of Florida and Michael Hardaway, former staffer to House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries and Senator Dick Durbin. David, let, let's huh? start with you. President Biden Richard. is being criticized by some on the right for recognizing today as both Easter Sunday and Transgender Day of Visibility. The Trump campaign called on the White House to issue an apology. The Trump camp also criticized the Biden White House for not allowing overtly re a religious egg designs for the Easter art event, which Politico points out it has been that way under every president since 1976, including... <laughs> I love when it's like, Biden did this horrible thing. No, it's it's been like that for under every president since 1976. Being under Donald Trump, House Republican uh, Speaker Mike Johnson joined in on social media, calling Biden's decision, quote, outrageous and abhorrent. Why are Republicans choosing this battle? It's really funny to me that the right, like, once again, this kind of leads back to the previous segment I was doing, talking about Christian nationalism and how crazy, hyper-religious, like, by the word of the Bible, uh, like, Christians in particular are. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of other crazy religious fanatics, but this is America, and Christians have a pretty strong stranglehold in everything here. They're the biggest threat, I would, I would say, as far as religious extremism goes, even bigger than... Um, like Islamic extremism, I would say. And so, with that in mind, we need to remember that these people do not operate within a worldview where other people's opinions are opinions, right? For these people, their opinions about, like, whether God exists and if, like, you should follow what God tells you to, these opinions, to them, are fact. And... What other people have are not opinions or even wrong opinions to them. They're blasphemous, evil, corrupting, degrading views. This ranges from everything to support for gay people and trans people, which they believe is inherently predatory and destructive to children and our society as a whole, to the existence of any form of, of 
secularism in our government or schools or our society. They see secularism as a dangerous thing because for them, if people live a secular lifestyle, they'll live a lifestyle so free that they won't generally want to choose religion. There aren't a lot of secular to truly religious, like, converts. It's not very common. Um, there are a whole lot more religious to secular converts, though. So in that case, the Republicans are desperate to try to make more young religious people. And a big part of that involves decrying any attempt to legitimize identities that religious fundamentalists consider inherently invalid uh, on a federal level. Biden doing this is powerful. The left may not see it as much because the left wants to discount Biden at every turn, but to the Republicans, they recognize how powerful of a statement this is to federally recognize the validity of trans people as not just a class of people, but a marginalized class of people that needs visibility and, like, attention and support. ...as a way to take on the president. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure, Rev, to be honest. I mean, there's a little bit of dirty political pool here, but uh, I think we got to hit it head on and suggest to President Trump and Mike Johnson and Senator Blackburn and others who are relying on the words of their Christ and their Jesus they celebrate today to condemn Joe Biden, uh, to suggest to them that actually the Jesus they celebrate today would be inclusive of the transgender community and would be supportive of the transgender community. Listen, listen, listen. You can't ever expect American Christians to do anything Christ-like. But what are you talking about? Thinking American Christians would do something that Jesus would do? That's all just slogans and bullshit to make themselves feel better. Community and demand all Christians, including Donald Trump, Mike Johnson, and others who celebrate today, that in fact they should love the transgender community as they love their own God. I am not sure the theology upon which they rely to criticize Joe Biden. I would say politically it's stupid because among the five to 10 percent of actual persuadable voters, part of their concern about today's Republican party is exactly this behavior. Why would you use time politically if you are Republicans to celebrate that you want to condemn and exclude fellow Americans that you do not want to? Well, Republicans and conservatives overall are fundamentally delusional. And a lot of these right-wing politicians are grifters. They don't care about the Republican Party winning. They care about just them winning because they're able to win over a very hyper-supportive base that gets them, like, notoriety, book deals, like, a media show in alt-media where they can make a few million and then retire. Like, a lot of these Republican politicians doing this, like, career party-destroying stuff with, like, cracking down on abortion gay rights, trans rights, etc., like internet porn. These are not people who have any concern about re-election or the long-term viability of the Republican Party. These are grifters who are just playing to a base, a hyper-radical base, to get as much attention as possible so that they can grift off of it provide equity and equality to all people, because that is essentially the message that was received by millions of Americans today. I think it's wrong theologically, it's wrong morally, and it's absolutely stupid politically. Michael, this day of awareness for trans Americans has been recognized since 2010, and the last time it overlapped with East... Whoa! Hold on. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure transgenders were invented in 2016 when Caitlyn Jenner came out as trans. <laughs> Excuse me. It was in 2013, so this is not new. Uh, the White House Deputy Press Secretary Andrew Bates responded to Republicans saying, quote, it's unsurprising politicians are seeking to divide and weaken our country with cruel, hateful, and dishonest rhetoric. President Biden will never abuse his faith for political purposes or for profit. Un yeah, remember, Biden is a Catholic, by the way, like a practicing Catholic. Quote. Now, that's in referring to Trump selling his $60 Bibles. What's the that best strategy in your judgment for the Biden? That is... Holy shit. I really hope Christians are right about God existing. Because that's a sin. 
I swear, it's got to be a sin to, like, sell $60 Trump brand Bibles. That's got to be a sin. Monetizing the good book? Mm-mm-mm. And can't are supposed to be free. these exaggerated culture war scandals, which seem to crop up on almost a daily basis. Well, you can't fall for the red herring, which is clearly what this is. House Republicans and Speaker Johnson have no record to run on. They've uh, presided over a disaster over the past year or so. You have constant threat of government shutdown. And on the other side, Donald Trump is facing 90 plus indictments across multiple states. He's got a that makes Trump a false prophet. Source am Christian. Thank you. Litany of crimes he's addressing. And so Trump is a this literal is false simply prophet. designed to change that conversation. Accurate. If you're President Biden and you're the White House, you cannot fall for this sham. Whenever, whenever you're asked about this particular story, you have to head back specifically outlining what's at stake, what Donald Trump has done, what House Republicans have done, have not done. And you have. I just really want to congratulate Jesus Christ on her transition. There's been no name change yet, so I'm not dead naming. Um, she's still trying to figure out what name she's going to go by now. But um, I really do appreciate uh, and support her. Uh, and so uh, Jesus Christ transition, I hope it goes very well. You have to over and over and over again tell that story. You cannot be wasting time responding to these ridiculous questions and ridiculous stories over and over again. Jessica Christ, that goes so hard. Listen, right-wing Christians can shit on Biden as much as they want for this. And a good example of it, actually, is this fucking hilarious uh, tweet. I love this. Joe Biden declares Easter Sunday transgender day of visibility. If this is true, these people are sick. Twisted and committed to destroying America's values and way of life. God help us. So I hit him with the, uh, Biden hit them with the, no God, the only man in the sky is me, Homelander. Main character and the hero of the hit television show, The Boys, as uh, all conservatives know quite well. Um, <laughs> uh, on top of that, like, conservatives are doing this shit all the while, Donald Trump is not a good Christian. Can we make that very clear? Like, Donald Trump is very much not a good Christian. Hold on. Donald Trump favorite Bible verse. Hey, chat. I want you to imagine, like, have you ever asked somebody if they've seen a show, movie, or read a book before that, like, Upon asking them about it, they very quickly reveal that they've never seen or, or, like, they know nothing about it. And they're being super unspecific and vague, and it's clear they lied to you in saying they've seen it. Um, imagine how people act and what they say in that situation. And uh, then watch this okay, clip of Trump after being asked what his favorite verse from the Bible is. Uh, after being After saying it's his favorite book. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want verse to get into it. There's no, no I, verse I, that means I, a I lot just, to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible. I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. Okay, you mentioned the Bible. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Trump on gay rights. This is back when Donald Trump was pretending to be pro-gay. The whole gays for Trump thing. Who remembers that? Uh. How can you not, like, how can you claim to be a Christian and not even think of a single Bible quote? Like, if you grew up around religion, you'd surely, like, pick up on one, right? Surely? 
I don't know. If I were there, I would have been like, <clears throat> All right, I'm telling you, my favorite verse from the Bible would have to be when Samson went and he killed all those guys by collapsing that entire Coliseum. That that was great. I really liked that bit. That, that was really funny to be. I found that the, the more death there is in the Bible, the funnier it is to be. Those are my favorite verses. He could have said that and his supporters would not have cared. He could have at least talked about part of the Bible. I don't know. I don't know. It's hilarious to me how conservatives are touting this guy as their great white Christian hope. And if you think I'm, I'm like, exaggerating there, that's Jesse Lee Peterson, who calls Donald Trump, and I quote, the great white hope. Alrighty. How do you guys like that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. Nope. It was 60 foxes, I believe, ride the rails. It was way more foxes than that, and he lit all those Philistine, or Philistine, I don't know how it's pronounced, Philistine, I think it's supposed to be pronounced, um, uh, like, villages off the face of the earth with flaming fox weapons. What are you doing for Jesus on Trans Day? Or Jesus Trans Day? Um, I'm gonna order some... I'm going to order some fried chicken because I'm out of groceries and my grocery order doesn't arrive till tomorrow morning and I need to eat. So I'm going to DoorDash some food and then I'm going to play The Witcher 3 or watch my friend Ethan play through The Witcher 3 for the first time or play the, through The Witcher 3 with Balthazar watching me uh, or watch The Witcher TV show, something along those lines. Free Philistine. Slashy, thank you for the five additional dollars. Very kind of you. It really does help and means a lot to me. Thank you. I'll use some of that money to buy food today. It says the book of Judas actually makes God a nice guy. Two separate gods, the false god of the Old Testament and the true god, and the true god of the new. Yeah, that makes absolutely no sense. Anyway, thank you so much for the five dollars. His last question, if Christians need to own the government to save people, why do they constantly just insult atheists? You said they have a mission. Are dedicated atheists exempt from that? No, no one's exempt from their mission. No. If you're, like, too much of a heretic or whatever, they'll just, like, they want you dead. But, like, they ideally have everyone convert and agree with them. And, like, there would be no dissent. Um, but that would mean the extermination of any people whose identities cannot be changed, but are not, like, in alignment with, con like, Christianity. So it doesn't matter if you're, like, a trans Christian when they have their Christian nationalist takeover, they won't believe you when you when they say the being trans is something you can't change, the, gen the gender dysphoria is just there, like you can't do anything about it. They won't believe you. They'll just kill you because they think you're choosing to do this. Many of them themselves have those urges, quote unquote, that they have to fight, and that's why they say it's a choice to be gay, to be trans, or to be lesbian or bi, they always say it's a choice because they think it's a choice, but it's not. Your sexuality is not a choice. I don't choose to be straight. I don't choose not to be attracted to men and to be attracted to women. It's like if you flashed for a millisecond like cleavage on screen right now and had an eye tracker on me, my eyes would dart to it. Like it would be a reflexive action. It's not something I control. Um, so when conservatives say being gay is a choice being trans is a choice that indicates that for them they have made the choice not to be trans which indicates to me they have the urge to be the desire to be something that is not present in people who are not trans not gay etc yeah also nobody is choosing to be trans in the sense that no one is choosing being trans is better than suppressing it when you have gender dysphoria, obviously. Um, but no one would choose being trans over being cis. It's not fun. It's not pleasurable. It's not pleasant. No one likes their entire existence being an argument that people feel uh, needs to be challenged. 
Be gay, watch Star Trek. True, go, go be gay and watch Star Trek. True, true, true. Anyway, everybody, I feel like here's a good place to wrap things up. Man, a four-hour stream. I really appreciate you all coming out today. Your support has really been great. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you for all the kind words, the likes, the subs, the donos, the views, everything. Really does mean a lot, a lot to me. With all that said, I think I'm just going to wrap things up here. Thank you all so much for watching, as always. Be safe. Have a good one. I should be going live tomorrow. Expect me. And after tomorrow's stream, which I'll try to do earlier, we will be doing a watch party of From. If a lot of new people show up, we will watch from episode one. But if we don't get a lot of new people, then we'll just continue from where we left off with like episode seven, I think. And we'll probably finish up season one. Or no, I think we were on the season finale. So we'll resume with the season finale and then we'll start season two. That's where we were, my bad. So yeah, we're like on episode eight and then we'll be picking up with season two after episode eight, unless more people show up. I finished from, and holy fuck, do not say anything, Ride the Rails. Do not spoil anything. Um, anyway, with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, have a good one. Oh yeah, and if I don't stream tomorrow, I can use the fact that it's April 1st as an excuse. Like, ah, I pranked you, fooled you. Haha. <laughs> anyway, have a good one, everybody. Doo-doo fart. <laughs>